Hey guys, uh, Shop Talk Podcast, episode 15. Yep, we're back. A little hiatus. Uh, last weekend we missed. Uh, we were planning on doing it on Monday, and then Kyle, you were sick. Yeah, and I'm still pretty gunked up. I'm gunked up all race weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah so then we, we tried for Tuesday, and you are you're like, ah, I'm still not feeling good. Yeah, so I didn't like, want to get you guys sick before the race. So, <laughs> so, so. yeah, that would have made everything worse. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, we held off last week um, because it was race week. So we were all super, super busy and just didn't want to get sick. So, but we're back. We finally got to race. It's going to be a, a big show. Yeah, this is going to be a long one. Maybe, <laughs> probably, could, maybe, could yeah. be. It could easily be super long. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Pine Lake, Gerald Deardall Memorial, Pine Lake 200 this past weekend. We're giving Chad Deardall a call, uh, asking him how the how it was being the promoter, second year in a row of them five year f- or, uh, five star promotions doing it. Giving Taylor Bunky a call, the winner of the Pro Stock Race, one who beat me again. <laughs> And then uh, Jesse Hallstrom, our buddy Jesse, who swept the semi-pro class and then actually had a pretty good showing in the pro stock class. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, was, he, he had a hell of a moves. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, big show. Um, and then all the stuff we got to talk about. And we're going to we're gonna try to squeeze in five minutes with Fox at, okay. the, end of the, at the end of it. Yeah, too. where was he this weekend, huh? He decided not to. God, what we'll, a wuss. We'll, we'll ask him about it. What you a think wuss. he would have podiumed like he said? Uh, for how fast his Nitro was, it would have been damn close. Really? Yeah. There was some... Wicked fast oh, open yeah. sleds. Yeah, there. there was there's a lot of fast sleds. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be I'm gonna be choreographing stuff on my phone kind of while as we're going. Um, so so yeah. So you're, what? You're the tech man. Yeah, you're the real tech guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, Chad Deardall, Taylor Bunky, Jesse Holstrom on the Shop Talk podcast tonight. Yes. Buckle, buckle, buckle up for the recap of the Pine, Pine Lake race, <laughs> yeah. 2024. <Buckle> <laughs> okay, you got questions loaded for Chad? <clears throat> I'm winging it, man. <laughs> okay. Okay, Chad, do it all. Brody, you got the sound? I'll try. Okay. Gunner. Hey, Chad, how's it going? You're on the Shop Talk podcast with me and Kyle Grover and Brody. <laughs> not, not bad, gentlemen. I'm doing my weekly chores of dishes and laundry. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so if we, finally, we finally got to race, Chad. The race finally happened after being postponed four times. And uh, besides the, the 30 below windshield, uh, I would say it was about a perfect weekend. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. I mean, we weren't perfect on our end on uh, a few things, but I tell you what, to get 185 entries through in from 9 a.m. to just a little after 3 p.m. every day uh, was quite the accomplishment for everybody involved. So we were pretty happy with that. A uh, little snow dust issues here and there, but it's a snowmobile race, not an Indy car race, like I tell people. So. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the, the snow dust, that's just that's just mother nature. Yeah, if it would have been thirty above, oh my gosh, it would have been an unbelievable weekend then. Yeah. That's just something yeah. you gotta deal with, you know. <clears throat> Which uh, but the track, holy shit. That's <laughs> like the coolest fucking track I've ever been on. Yep. And it it was nice and wide, flat, smooth, uh a million lines you could take. And uh it was just all out sleds were muscling, like <laughs> the sleds were doing a lot of work. Like they could go anywhere. <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, we strive for a track like that every year, but we we can only do it so much. It's, we take what Mother Nature can give us, and and she rewarded us with a month delay and just gave us an absolute beautiful track. Like I said in the Facebook post, we couldn't have got it better with the Zamboni out there. It was, I'm surprised you guys were still so high in the air. I mean, we had no braking bumps hardly at all after we picked up the track and. I was like, man, these guys should be slammed down to their belly pans if, I, if it was me out there. But <laughs> it was just absolutely beautiful. I mean, Brian Nelson and Larry Stella plowed it. And I did the maiden voyage out there in the Nelson International Plow Truck. And I was like, ooh, I only tripped the plow once. This thing is going to be going to be beautiful out here. So, <laughs> yeah, I, and she rewarded us, that's for sure. It looked pretty darn fun. Kind of wish that was out there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, the track the track was unreal on how on how well it was laid out. It flowed. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a single spot where it like felt like something was out of place. It was just you could flow from this corner to this sweeper to this straightaway. And yeah, like you said, Kyle, just a million lines like you could like me and Ree were battling side by side in the pro open qualifier and you could easily fit th- three wide mm-hmm. in most of the most of the ice lines. Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. <clears throat> Another comment I heard was from your dad, uh, uh, Glenn. He said, well, sweepers are so fun. You know, you, like, you can just use your body to break yourself a little bit. You can just pitch your body outside behind your windshield and hood and, and slow yourself, keep it wide open and slow yourself down that way and get back in when you needed to, when you felt you could handle it and stuff. So it, it seemed to work pretty well for everybody out there. I had a, I mean, I checked with a lot of the pros on uh, after the trade lap on Saturday morning and, and I ask, I always ask the pros how the visibility is. And they said, oh, it's not great, but it's doable. So, but then they also said, excellent track, thumbs up, and unbelievably going to be fun. So, mm-hmm. and then the, yep. the the amount of snow, we didn't have very much snow out there neither. So then that was nice that the, the berms at the end of the corners weren't two feet tall. So if you did blow a corner, it wasn't the end of the world. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it was, we had some uh, drifting issues every morning, so we had to send the plow trucks out. I mean, like Brian Nelson called me at 6.30 or texted me 6.30 Saturday morning and said, ton of snow out here, we need more trucks. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> on the phone I was, you know, scrambling to find more plow trucks, but uh, Larry Stella actually uh, put in a, a natural snow fence. He plowed beside the racetrack on a lot of it and uh, made, a, made a, a path alongside the racetrack to – kind of catch the snow before it got to the racetrack. So that sure seemed to help a lot too. So we mm. learned something for this year mm. on that. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then we also, uh, when we plowed, we made sure we, we, we knew where the prevailing winds were going to be that weekend. So if we were heading a certain direction, we'd make sure that the high banks were uh, on the side that wouldn't catch all the snow and get, catch it on the racetrack type of deal. So we're learning every year on it. That's for sure. Yeah. Heck yeah. But yeah, another, uh, like, I wonder if this is like the highest paying snowmobile race there's maybe ever been (laughs) with, was it, it came out to be over $83,000 you guys paid out, right, Chad? Well, I got to make a correction on that. Uh, yeah, my mother, um, read the contingency money wrong. Um, so we're actually down to 73,000, but it's still $12,000 more than last year. And we paid out. $65,000 $65,000 in cash out of our, out of all of our sponsor money, uh, raffle money, uh, admissions and all that stuff. So, and the 70%, uh, third, the 70% payback from all classes as well. So it's gotta be right up there in the lower 48 for one of the highest paying races for a non I 500 type of deal. That's for sure. Yeah. So $73,000 for, for, <laughs> for two days of racing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. So last year, 63, six, I don't know. I can't remember what exactly it was, but it was, it's a huge amount. We paid out 63 last year in cash, cash and contingencies. We paid out 65K this year in just cash mm-hmm. money to all you racers. So, yeah. No, I mean, no. shoot, we even, we even threw a grand into the junior classes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I know when I was talking to you in the bar after the race there, Chad, just the amount of people that were coming over to you and just telling you on how much they appreciate the the payback that they're they're getting for their kids, even in like the sport classes, on just how far on how far that goes for just the sport guys too. Oh yeah. I mean we've all been broke racers before and, and be able to help the grassroots out and and uh you know, just to get them to the next race and carry on and pay some bills and I mean I've heard stories of Racers back in the day, if they didn't qualify well enough, they'd have to stay out, stay where they were, and wait till the next race weekend to, you know, write bad checks and go racing again <laughs> and hope they made it. So <laughs> there's a lot of stories like that back in the '90s. So you know, it's part of the part of the sport, part of the love of the sport. But uh, we love the sport as well, so we just try and support as much as we can, and even in the lower ranks and. And give back as much as we can. Mm-hmm. Oh heck yeah, uh, Brody! It was your first uh, Pine Lake race ever. Would you? Would you think? Well, yeah. <laughs> going back to the track, on like the test tracks we we made, 
or you know super tight not high speed and so when i got on the 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 parade lap i'm like holy shit this is a fast track <laughs> like i'm gonna I, I can hold this sled wide open for so long mm-hmm. and it's it made it so fun just to bury that sled to the bottom of the speedo <laughs> in multiple spots on the track it was awesome yeah well i watched you guys podcast with my brother on there and he said we need speed up pine lake but you also need handling well i brought back more of the speed this year so <laughs> totally yeah you did need speed but you did need to handle in the in the sweeping corners mm-hmm. because there the, was the sweepers to the 90s are like you know get pretty technical yeah so. And, like, a lot of the time the groove was, like, in, where if you went to the outside a little bit, like, where the snow was, mm-hmm. it was actually a better line. So Oh, sure, just yeah. on how the line developed. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it was actually a harder snow out there, so you still had traction. Yeah. It looked like there was snow, but it was, it was actually very hard packed out there, and it looked like you guys could have some grip. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. No, it was, a, it, was a, it was an awesome weekend. Props to you and all the – all the deer dolls that help with it and all the plow, plow truck people and like, I don't know. It's a lot of work that goes into it. I know mm-hmm. for you guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's uh, it starts back in August. Me and Scott Schuster went to uh, the ISR training at Hay Days and you know, that was a two day ordeal for us to get ISR certified. So we can get you guys, uh, you know, we can follow their rules and get you guys to continue to see money and all that, which is a much compared to what we pay out, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, uh, hint, hint, uh, manufacturers, let's step it up a little bit here, but yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. And then, you know, then it, it proceeds to getting the raffle going and, you know, we make, we, that's a, we make about $7,000 off that raffle and, and that's mom and Jenna's deal there that they take care of that and everybody pitches in and they really want a new stone to let you on with mm-hmm. last year so <laughs> that was a big seller but i think we're gonna have to go back to giving away kids kids uh 120s and whatnot next year on that but yeah yeah you know, and then we got and then you got all the spectators and uh you know and whatnot so yeah it's just it's an all-around uh group effort and we had the usfc guys uh come in again this year to mark the course set up staging run staging run the uh, you know, everything that they do, I mean, I don't have to worry about what their job, what if they're going to do a good job or not. That's the least of my worries is them guys. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Did you have any yeah. stats on uh, on the amount of spectators that made it through this weekend, Chad? Cause there yeah, was... we were down a little bit this year. We had about 500 each day. Um, uh, you know, it was, whatever, 30 below wind chill. Mm-hmm. So, sure a lot of them stayed home even though you can watch it from your vehicles a lot of people are uh well it looked nice and comfy on my couch instead of going to a race but i tell you what they missed some darn good racing but they <laughs> 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 i mean how many lead changes were there in the stock final for you guys at the top there going any idea um i know me and paul brown went back and forth maybe two or three times and then uh me and taylor went back and forth one or t- one or two times as well, but it was. Yeah. But we were. It was me and Paul and Taylor were all within five seconds of each other for the first six seven laps there. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it's insane. And then you look at the final results, and you were two point four seconds behind them after 100. basically driving from Bagley, Minnesota to Grand Forks, North Dakota, and you know you set the crews on your cars at 65 and somebody's going to beat you there by a minute anyway i mean but to have fuel stops and all that and you guys be that close at the end it's just a classic pine lake finish once again yeah so yeah pretty amazing competition out there yeah like in i have the the sheet here in front of us like the amount of the on um, the amount of racers that were all within our best lap times were all within like the same second of each other like yeah and I heard you're going to interview Jesse Hallstrom later, and uh, that apparently that semi pro beat you guys all at the fast time. I see. <laughs> yep, yep. But that was it's it's a funny predicament there because when I won semi pro back in 2019, and I jumped in, into pro that year from the from the back row, I mm-hmm. also had the fastest lap of the race yep, from from the back row yep. too. <clears throat> yep. Really? As the semi pro, wow. yeah. So so I got that to compare with Jesse on the <laughs> phone that we both. We're semi-pro setting the fastest lap in pro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
The other thing I had a question for you guys is I heard a lot about the drafting that took place out there between the guy in front of you and the person behind or whatever. Was that quite evident or prevalent that weekend this weekend? Yeah, yeah, big time. Um, there was a point where Brody, at the start of the race, Brody was ahead of me, <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> on the on the mile long straights and stuff, I could really draft on Brody, like creep on him big time. But then I got right next to him, and like I looked at him, and our visors on our helmets were like two inches away from each other, <laughs> yeah, and the ours. sled just slowed way down. So it uh. was it was pretty. <laughs> pretty relevant that it was drafty like you could draft like crazy yeah like you, yeah usually it's like a, a one one groove that mm-hmm. you can just draft right up behind somebody but like it was the main groove was so wide that you could draft up behind them and then get right next to them mm-hmm. and and you were bo- both going the same speed there wasn't like a slow line like in the ice chips or anything man we need some drones to go that fast and follow you guys yeah, That's well, pretty cool. yeah. I try. I tried to get Mandy to have the drone out there this weekend, but she said it wouldn't have lasted more than a minute being up in the air for for how cold and how windy it was. So right, right. Brian and Brian, my brother's got a story about the drafting on that long back stretch back in the bay there, and how he uh, um, Corey Davidson was leading and he drafted up on him and actually shoved his belly pan right up the back of Corey's <laughs> Corey sled, and I think his feet kept for touching his hips or something like that. But, yeah, and then Corey let him go in the next corner. But, yeah, I mean, we've been drafting out there for a long time, but it was more prevalent this weekend than I think of any other weekend, uh, mainly because I think the ice through was really smooth and uh, it made a big difference on how much control you had over your snowmobile when you got up close to him, I'm guessing. Yep. So. Yeah, and there's, yeah, just because of how wide it was, too, I would say. Like, it was just... It was just like like going down a freaking freeway almost. Mm-hmm. It was <laughs> yeah. right. It just wasn't yeah. one line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what a difference a year makes, you know, because last year Brian Nelson and I I was driving the fall truck and I had him out probably ten times in that first lap looking at the ice and walking me through on where to go around slush spots and sketchy ice and all that stuff. So I mean this year we we were just able to click right along and we had a foot of ice all around the lake and and it was just beautiful. So pretty fortunate there yep. on that end. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was just I was happier in hell that we we had it. We were we had a chance to to race again. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's been pretty damn stressful. You know, December fourteenth and fifteenth we we're supposed to go, and then New Year's and fifth and sixth, and all the thirteenth, fourteenth, or whatever it was. So, but uh, everybody was itching to go and. And everybody is able to get ready also. And that's and it looks like uh, we got, I mean, we got 26 pros on Sunday. So yep. Yep. that's huge. I mean, that's got to be a, one of the other than the 500. That's got to be a, one of the top turnouts, I guess, for pros. So, yeah. Yep. Huh. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. You guys. What was, your, what was your guys' favorite part of the racetrack? Um, I would just have to say like almost all of it. Like I, there wasn't a single spot that didn't, that wasn't fun. Like it all just, it just flowed. Yeah. The whole time was like beautiful. Yep. Except for crashing on Saturday. That sucked. That was my, not my least favorite part, but (laughs) yeah, that one corner or (laughs) the two corners. Yeah. (laughs) That's not the track fault usually. (laughs) No, there, no coming into that first turn, that first right-handed turn there. Uh, Saturday morning, it was a, it was a crack in the ice that I hooked coming in. And so that was, uh, just a freak thing. Yep. Just a total fluke thing of one in a million chance of hitting it, hitting it counter steered like that. And it just hooked and Mm -hmm. took off. Is that when you messed up your elbow? Uh, no, the elbow was the pro open final crash. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. I remember somebody saying you should have worn elbow pads. Well, They've never gotten arm pump either. So yeah, yep. <laughs> no. yeah you would you would never be able to wear elbow pads. Like I don't I don't know of anybody that actually does. I think some oval racers do or whatever, but oh, sure. they they get they get slapped on the ice a lot faster and harder than us too. We usually just slide, but yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't know. It's just overall it's just a Darn good weekend, and and I got to give my hats off to everybody in the Schuster Auctioneering scoring trailer. Uh, we had we had some learning curve there, but they got better throughout the weekend, and and everything just clicked off. So, uh, you know, we we like I say we did have a few issues, but I expected that. But I tell you what, I mean, you guys, I'd radio up to them, and you guys ready? They're like, yep, and I just 
start surfing my yellow flag and bring you guys up to the line. And as soon as everybody lined up, we were going. So pretty smooth weekend and got everybody out of there nice and early and we weren't using our headlights to finish the pro finals. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> got to thank uh, uh, Doyle Erickson too. Like that guy was standing out in the cold all freaking weekend and then, <laughs> and then plowing the course besides that. Like that's a uh, yeah. pretty hardcore right there. <laughs> yeah. And he forgot his face mask. I didn't get it put on right away in the morning on Saturday morning. And I, you know, I was lining sleds up there and then I walked up to him after everybody took off and I like, Doyle, your nose is turning white already. Yeah. Isn't it? Jesus. You know, see, it's starting frostbite already right there. And thank God Roth RV had the fish house there for him and for us in staging because it was, it hurt to look into the wind all mm-hmm. weekend. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> like, I was hiding, I was holding the yellow flag and I was waiting for you guys to clear turns one, two, or three or whatever when I let you go. And, and uh, I'd have to hide behind the flag because I, I, I got a face mask and goggles to myself because I can't think of everything this weekend. But yeah, yeah. Oh, I got to apologize to everybody that hears this about uh, pro stock opening uh, the first two rounds, pro stock at semi pro. I didn't put enough space between the heats. Uh, so you guys kind of co mingled together. And and I should have let you go another half mile before I let the next one go. But uh, it all worked out in the end, I guess. But just for the crowd, knowing where each person was in the heat and whatnot, we'll learn for next year. So, <laughs> no, heck yeah, no, it is a yeah. Just a hats off to to everybody that that helped with the race. I'm I'm already looking forward to next year. <laughs> I know, me too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we'll be able to, uh, you know, exceed our payout that we've got this year, but I mean, we'll we'll strive for it. I mean, but we also got you know, 30 more entries this year compared to last year or whatever it was. So, I mean, this, this race and hopefully cross country of the sports is growing and, and will continue to grow. And hopefully we'll have over 200 next year and just roll on from there. So oh, yeah. oh yeah. Once, every, once people know that there's, there's money involved, that's when people really mm-hmm. take notice. Like, yeah. yeah. Money involved in a well-run race is uh, a good combination. That's mm-hmm. for sure. And yeah, yep. it was smooth all weekend long. Mm-hmm. Just race after race after race, no hiccups. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the scoring ladies, they did need 20 minutes each day to catch up and double check on things and make sure they were correct. But I mean, we needed to plow anyway, and the crew, some of the crew needed to grab a bite to eat. And uh, yeah, and then I mean, hats off Steve Dolan, too, his first time ever announcing a snowmobile race. And he was very knowledgeable and, and kept the crowd entertained. And Played my playlist on the music most of the time, and then he snuck a few of his songs in there. Uh, get on the radio, hey, what's this? So. <laughs> yeah, music wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A couple songs so, in there, it's like, okay, this is different, but the, you know, the rest was like r- old rock and roll dad stuff that everyone loves. So, hey, you know, I had we have fan, race fans out there from eight years old to eighty years old. So I even had to throw in a little Patsy Cline for that. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Brody just wants you to play Cotton Eye Joe. With <laughs> I didn't even have that on the list, I don't think. <laughs> I'll add it though next year. Uh, so, yeah. But, so, yeah, I mean, all in all, a great weekend and huge turnout. And I don't even think guys talking to the Bunkies and, you know, you know they, they win money at the 2 500, but, you know, it's 1200 bucks to enter and they're out there for six days with hotels for 10 man, 12 man crew. And, all the family and stuff and, and shoot, they probably made more money here this weekend than they did at the Sioux. So. Oh yeah. Uh, it was, yeah. With our payout last year of winning the 440 class and the pro open and second place last year, I think it was over 19,000 that Arlo racing brought home last year. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Which is looking insane. at the results. Also, you guys are the thing to point out is looking at the results is like every one of these guys were testing like crazy prior to Pine Lake and it showed mm-hmm. the guys that didn't test mid pack to back of the pack. So you guys hard work certainly paid off to uh, get these finishes. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was 900 miles on my sled coming into the weekend. <laughs> yeah. <God>. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all the time you start. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I don't know. That's how I feel comfortable and confident on it. 
just coming in that I know what it's I know what it's gonna do, but but I had a shitty day on Saturday. I didn't know what it was gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> you had no idea. It was your first time on a sled. It seemed like it was. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to the best of us, though, Gunner. Don't worry about it. Yep. So. Yep. No, I was I yep. was glad I was able to turn turn it around for Sunday because I was sure. I was really. I was pretty gutted on Sunday morning on <laughs> if I knew how to ride a snowmobile or not anymore. <laughs> oh, you, you'll never forget, you never forget how to ride one. It's just the, you just found the edge Saturday and refined it on Sunday is what, you know, what I think you did. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep. But no, yeah. Thanks for uh, like, Je- hey, like Jesse Strag used to say, if you don't crash once or twice, you're not riding hard enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <clears throat> Well, hopefully I cross those off the list for, for quite a while now. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, hopefully you guys have a good rest of the year uh, on the ice circuit, on the ice races, because hopefully they're as smooth as this one, because we kind of gave them the blueprint on how to get it done. So. Yeah, for sure. That you did. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, thanks thanks for the for, thanks for the time tonight, Chad. It was nice to get a word from the what it's like to run it as the promoter side of, of things on how it's going yeah. for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And special shout out to my mom and sister because like I said, at the awards banquet, we would not be racing if it wasn't for them because I suck at paperwork and oh, and mm-hmm. Kirsten Zimple for doing the registration. Uh, yeah. I mean, Scott Schuster, Andy Mack, uh, Brian Nelson, um, Scotty Neath, Brian Olson, um, Stevie Ray. I mean, it's just great to see all them old boys again. I mean, they're, they're good for one race a year, they say, and I'm glad they choose finally to do it. So, yeah, yeah. very sure. true. Yep. And I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of people. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, when I had to cancel or reschedule these races, I had to, I'd made about 30 phone calls to everybody. So there's 30 people. Oh, i got to thank Joe Duncan for uh, at ERX there for giving us radio communications and the finish line trussel and, um, and transponders to rent and all that good stuff. And I'm getting another call from Hawaii. I don't know. But yeah. anyway, so, all right. Well, gentlemen, thank you. And uh, I know you got more interviews to do, and I got to continue my bachelor chores here. So, <laughs> this sounds good, Chad. Thanks. Have a good night. Yep, you too. Thank you. Yep. Bye, Chad. Huh? So, yeah, $73,000 paid out at Pine Lake. Which two, is still two insane. Days. Yeah. Two days of racing. That's crazy. Yep. That's gotta. That's gotta make like other racers and other circuits like think of like, man, where's all this other money going? Mm-hmm. Like, I know, I know, race circuits have to make money. Like, it's a business. That's how they make money. That's their business. They're running. But like, there's, it feels like there could be some more money paid out and gave gave back to help the racers. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, yeah, we're just <clears throat> classic class racers, and we. Got paid out nice in this one, but all the other races, there's no payout. Mm-hmm. Kind of sucks, but okay. I'll st- uh, I'll give I'll give Taylor a ten ten minute notice. We'll talk about fantasy. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> ninety nine people in fantasy. Is that right? No, wasn't it like eighty three, eighty four? Can't remember. It was but, uh, it was ninety nine. Entries and then uh, eighty three after the double entries were total. Yeah, yep. 83, 83 people in fantasy. So people really want that hundred dollar gift card. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's so it's Woody's hundred as of right now. Uh, could be more. Woody's hundred dollar gift card. Um, Vince still is working on a fox thing. Whatever that may whatever be. that may be, and then uh, Spencer from the Carbide Podcast is donating a gallon of Polaris VES <laughs> oil. Yeah, yep. VES oil to for for the list of prizes. Mm-hmm. So, thanks to Spencer Carbide Podcast. But I do have to call Spencer out on his on his picks. Didn't even put me in the top 5. Come oh wow. On. No Come way. on. That's Come. a that's a low <laughs> blow there. I don't even know this Spencer guy, but what the hell? <laughs> Can't even uh, put him in the top five, and he's somebody. It's somebody his way podcast. up here has Aaron Christensen in there, and he didn't even race. Well, no, it's hard for yeah. Like we were waiting, kind of if there was going to be like an entry list, then we were going to maybe uh, eliminate some. eliminate some yeah. people. Yeah, but we didn't. <laughs> um, oh, and then Jesse Hallstrom, we had our wild card picked as tenth place. Yeah, okay, and we had the whole list of pro entries. 
No Jesse Hallstrom. No Jesse Hallstrom. So oh, so no one won the wild card? Nobody won the wild card. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Because yeah. Jesse got 10th. God uh, damn we it. we didn't have him on the list. Wow. So, so yeah. yeah. And it's kind of a hit or miss thing if they take the top three in semi-pro and put yep. them into pro. So it's, it's yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, Shop Talk Podcast, Cross Country Fantasy League. Cooper Kangas is leading with 52 points. We'll just run, I'll just run down, like, the top 10 here. Uh, of Sorry if I mispronounce your name. We, but, we, yeah, we suck at but we pronouncing. Got, we got it here. We're going to keep order of it. The list of phone numbers for – this is just round one of all the – there's so we'll do round one and then name the top ten, and that's how people know who's winning. Sure, sure. Good, yeah, yep. good idea, Kyle. So yeah, Cooper Kangas, number one. Uh, Brad Trask, second. Sean Johnson, uh, Vince Van Slyke with fourth. Nate Lindham, Reese Hoffarth, uh, Polly V in seventh. Um, what is the next last name? Rachel Wimflammer. Yep, in eighth. Perfect. Frank, Frankie, Frankie Paul, that's uh, Nate Awash. Oh, really? Yep, Snow Deal. In ninth, and Mitch Sebastian in tenth. So, yeah, there's your top ten of uh, Shop Talk Fantasy. E. Money Harris in eleventh. That's a guy I used to work with in New York. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then, Money Harris. Well, we could keep j- just some notice, notables. Hayden uh, Knightsky, the oval guy. Yep. Team Team Zero on our double, double zero. Double zero. Yep. That's a sweet sled. In twelfth. Uh, Troy Dewall, you're in 16th. Emily Wicklin, 19th. Uh, Keegan Hauser, 23rd. Nick Bonesteiner, 26th. Kyle, down in 28th. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. There's a lot of 30s there. Yeah, yeah out of 83 there. people, 30th and, ain't bad. And th- all those 30s, those are all time stamped too. So that's how it's in that order uh, also. Scott mm. Preston, you are in, what's that? What, what number is he? Uh, 22nd. 22nd, that's pretty good. Yep. So, yeah, we got the whole list here on, on the screen of all the results. Um, so, yeah, thanks for playing. That was, I don't know, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I didn't get any time to readjust my picks on Sunday. Yeah. So that kind of sucked but because I was going to move them around after yeah. qualifying and stuff. <laughs> but I didn't, never did get time. So For how, how poor my weekend was going, I didn't want to put any more yeah. bad luck on myself for, like, <laughs> yeah. picking myself for fantasy. <laughs> so I didn't even do it this weekend. I was like, for how things have gone, I was like, this is one less thing to worry about. So, so yeah. So, it. So, yeah, sorry to the people that picked me to win. I let you down. Sorry. But they still got points because you did get second. Yep. For the third time yep. in a row. Yep. So, like, uh, yeah, uh, Cooper Kangas' winning winning picks were uh, Wes Selby, Gunnar Arlo. So, he got me for second. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dan for third. And then Taylor fourth, uh, Herf, and then Bo Bunky for tenth. Um, so, yeah, he was close. Mm-hmm. He was damn close. Talking yeah. about Herf in the pro final. Herf and Dave Brown. Did, did you get to hear about it? No. The whole entire race were just back and forth. Like, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> like, they'd come around one lap, and Dave would be in front, and then, like, Herf would be on his ass. Yeah. And then next lap, Herf would be in front, and then, like, it came right down to the last lap, and they were still just neck and neck. So, huh. I don't know if they were playing around or <laughs> or what they were doing, but they made it entertaining anyway. Oh, really? So, yeah. Yeah, because that's what I had heard that Herf – kind of fell back and uh he started he started up front yeah like he was uh it was almost three wide between me and uh zach and paul in the one section of that like sweeping left-hander like we were almost three wide yeah and then that's where i got around zach there and then that next straightaway i got around paul and then uh yeah i didn't i thought for sure that he would have kind of put a hook in paul for how how close paul stayed to me that he would have been able to stay right there with paul but then I don't know. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> and that was, there was a lot of, you know, for us, there was kind of some speculation on how fast the catalyst was going to be this year for like uh, pro class and stuff. Yeah. And uh, they proved their point. I mean, Paul was Paul, leading for. Yeah. Paul Brown was right there with me and Taylor and for the first five, six, seven laps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. So they're <clears throat> fast. Yeah. He was. Yeah. He was staying right in my draft and he was pushing it hard into the corner. So. <laughs> I know I looked back a couple times and I was like, damn, Paul, right there still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go away. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was saying about you. Mm. Yeah. 
looking back at you like, God damn it, so, Kyle, go away. That's what I said about Tate in the 440 class, like the first lap. We got down that straight, and I hit a bog. And whoa, and I <laughs> seen Tate behind me. I was like, God, please go away. <laughs> and then he, he come alongside me, and then it finally got in the RPM, and we were kind of dead nuts. And then it, the way it, the sweeper was, I wasn't in favor of the of getting the buy him or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he got around me there, but uh, yeah, no, that was fun. What were you guys doing in the 440 race? Like, I didn't even see you out there. <laughs> <laughs> I seen you. I was brought, I bet, I, I was, yeah, probably 200 yards behind you the whole time. I don't know. I had a pretty good gap. It was more than 200. Was it? Oh, yeah. Uh, we were on the same straights a lot. Those straights are a mile long. <laughs> yeah, but I still could see him. I was in a s- snow dust. Mine? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, Tate was in your snow dust, and then I was. No, I'll show you. I'll show you a video when oh, we're did done. Did you get a I concussion? Was, no, 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 I remember. Yeah, <laughs> I was so mad after how on how bad Saturday went when I got on that 440. It was like this is <coughs> this is on now, and it was just full out sprint for two laps. And I was like, usually because when we're on our new sleds, we're trying not to use the brakes, mm. but those brakes on that 440 are so thick too. Yeah, I was like, I'm fucking using brakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I was. I mean, after Tate got around me, I was like, it would still come out of the corner and it would whoa, whoa, instead of oh, really? wind out. So Tate would just leave me in a corner and I would fucking watch his brake light and I'd just be fine. <laughs> 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 I'm not breaking, old man. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, yeah, uh, we got we got so much. Stuff we got to so get much into to talk of, about of the weekend. We could do a part two of this. Honestly, yep. we I could mean, do a part two of just what we experienced throughout the weekend. For us to get third in that race, it, it just t- it really helped. My brother won the won the first heat. Yep. So that. Uh, oh, Colin won. Hey, Dad, you're on. You're live on Shop Talk podcast. <laughs> no way. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, cool is that? <laughs> yeah. What's What's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, let's just call him to see what you guys are doing. Oh, yeah, we're we're filming right now. We just got off the phone with Chad, and and in about uh, four minutes, we're calling Taylor. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, you to to recap finally <laughs> quick for you. You won the Masters Fifty class yeah, on yeah. the on the Catalyst. How'd that go for you? Well, I went uh, really good. Uh, didn't get cold a bit. Goggle setup was perfect. It just went uh, super smooth. And um, cat, uh, Catalyst was a little high on RPMs on Saturday, did some work to it, got the RPMs down for Sunday, and it ran great. I'd like to say I had the fastest Catalyst out there. <laughs> 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 but, but maybe not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, yeah, you swept the, swept the Masters 50 class with a 1-1 on the yeah, weekend. Yeah, one 1-1. And one. <clears throat> yeah, the guys I talked to at the end there uh, – uh, Carver and then uh, the Players guy. Um, both those guys were just super congratulatory, and um, we're all shaking hands and everything. We were, me and the Players guy, we had a good good run going for a little while. <laughs> uh, heck yeah! It was yeah. Su- super fun though. Yeah, that's what makes it fun. Uh, good race. Yeah, what a racetrack! The racetrack was freaking awesome. Yeah, that's what we were just telling Chad on how nice and wide it was and how how well it was plowed. <clears throat> huh? But yeah, we'll. Uh, yeah, we'll talk to you later, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. You got Taylor coming on the line, so. Yep, yeah, we're giving yeah Taylor a call and then Jesse Hallstrom a call after that. So. Okay, we'll see you guys later. All right, see ya. Yep, see ya. <laughs> Bye. So, guest, guest appearance. <laughs> guest appearance, Glenn Arlo. <laughs> cool, fun fact. The only Arlo not to crash on Pine Lake weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Happens yeah. to the best of us. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, both the Arlo boys crashed. Yep, not a not a single day went by where Arlo didn't crash. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So yeah, Taylor Bunky, Bunky Racing, uh two time winner of Pine Lake Race now. Is that the only consecutive winner? Or not consecutive, but two time winner? No, Herf's, no. Herf's won it three times. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. I don't know about consecutive. It might be though. No, he didn't win it consecutive. No. no uh, who who Dan, won it? Dan won it last year. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so yeah, we'll give Taylor a call here and get uh, get the pro stock winner on. Yeah. Talk, talk about our pro stock battle. 
<laughs> yeah, that was a good one. It was fun to watch. Hello. Hey, Taylor, how's it going? Oh, it's going pretty good. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Sitting here in the in the garage with Kyle and Brody, just uh, just BSing about Pine Lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we just got off the phone with uh, Chad, and we were just talking about how well, on how well the course was, on how nice and wide and smooth, and on how it stayed like that all weekend. What you What do you think of it? Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit after the race. Um, you know, this year was, it was a unique year with, I guess, kind of how cold it was and like how, when the track was, when Chad and the team went and blew the track out, they were able to make everything really wide. Um, and it, I think that kind of, it saved the, it saved for the most part, like the groove that we normally develop, right? Like it, I don't know. It seemed like our, the racing groove that we had was, I don't know, eight feet wide in spots, 10 feet wide. Yeah. Instead of being like one, one sled wide, it was almost like three sleds wide. Yeah. It made it pretty easy to pass. Yeah, for sure. And it made for a lot of good battles. Like there were normally on that track, like going down a couple of those long straightaways, like there's only one line you can really run. And then you, you kind of lead into a sweeping, sweeping corner or, or like some of those tighter corners, and if you're not in the groove, you're not fast. But this year was completely opposite. Like you could run in the groove and be fast, and then you could you could kind of pick a different line outside of the groove, like out in the duff, and you could still carry speed. Yeah. Yep. So it was, yeah, it was a it was definitely a a, a different different than I'd say the past two, three, four years of Pine Lake, but it was it was a good difference. I think it was a more competitive, racy, um, racy track. Yeah, I liked sure. it a lot. It was it was a good, good clean track. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, it's it started out on uh, Saturday. I talked to Taylor in the in staging. I said, "So did you and Bo have to draw straws on to see who was running the mini mod for this weekend?" <laughs> 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 yeah, we didn't have a plan for that. I mean, we so we've been building this the snowmobile um and we mimicked the we main, mimicked the whole chassis after our our sue sue platform um so we approached everything you know based off of kind of our notebook from the sue we used, did a couple of things to the the tunnel bulkhead lighten things up um kind of put the, the sue geometry on um for the front end and in the skid and we threw our our sue shocks in and got a rolling chassis ready and we took a um an f3 put you know the players f3 power plant and uh and pipe and everything and and cdi box and dropped it in our our stew chassis and we're like well let's see what this thing does you know no one's done this yet for our discipline of racing and you know it seems like it makes power right like in snowcross the guys are wicked fast and it's got all kinds of oomph out of the out of the hole shots and well you know why not let's do something a little bit different and see how see how it works and we got the thing on the lake and did a little bit of riding with it and it was we had some hurdles we had to get through but it was pretty obvious early on it was like okay there's something here this thing seems to be working pretty good and it's got some oomph Mm-hmm. You know, we did some testing side by side with our our stock cross countries, and like that platform just seemed to pull. Like we, I'd ride it, and I'd pull Bo by two, three sled lengths, and we'd switch, and he'd pull me by two, three sled lengths, and it was like, okay, yeah, this thing, this thing's gonna be fun if it if it lives for a race. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's we got to got to be more reliable than like a full blown out mod, you know. So like, yeah, we're super Hattin, stable. Yeah, where Hatine was falling back a little bit. I don't know if he had a technical. I there. think he did have some kind of issue. Oh yeah. yeah, he stopped in the the gas stop and he had a side panel off and he was looking for tools and he couldn't get them and so he just had to throw it back on and deal with it. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's definitely a cool build you guys got there. Like, uh, like you were saying, more of a F F three style um, platform, a little more reliable yeah. for uh, distance stuff. You know, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, you you look at some of the stuff we do, and we put a beating on on our equipment. We we put them to the ringer. They they run wide open for. Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, how long are the straightaways at Pine Lake? Like you're you're wicked for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah you know, for about and a mile. There aren't many applications where where an engine sees that type of a you know, a, a hard strain for that long. Yeah. Remember, remember like Park Rapids, like three years ago where we had that almost two mile long stretch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was, <laughs> yes, they do. That, that, killed, <laughs> that killed, I don't know how many mod sleds that day. <laughs> I think that was the yep. first race that Alex had his uh, matrix mod there, or maybe it was Nato wash one of the two. Oh, but, sure. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was, uh, that was pretty sweet. Listening to that thing. <laughs> it was brand new. And yeah, that thing works. Like it's fast. Like that matrix mod, it scoots. Mm-hmm. But so is this something? Like I don't. I oh sorry. I think there's there. something. Oh no, no big deal. I think there's something to be said about simplicity, right? Like totally. Keep it simple. Don't overthink it, and you know, get it close, and just make it handle good. I mean, if you can, if you can get a couple of those those key small components right, there's no reason why you can't be a contender. Even if you're, even if you're off a little bit. You know, if you're just a little bit off on speed or um, just a little off on handling, um, but you're close, that's that's bigger than, you know, I think having an overabundance of power or an overabundance of handling and not enough power or vice versa, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it had it had to been going fast and it had been handling good because, yeah, Bo had, the, Bo had the fastest lap of the race, just even a second faster and – Tate on their full blown mod, and you know there's you know there's no expenses spared on that Nelson mod sled. So, right. yeah, <clears throat> yep, yeah, yeah, he he ran a heck of a race. That kid can uh, <laughs> get right a snowmobile. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> you, you had to have been damn proud of him to see to see him win in his first uh, pro open race racing against since you guys are in the same class now. <laughs> yeah, that was that was exciting. It was. It was really cool to see. You know, you I didn't expect that sled to be that fast, and to go out and do what he did is like that's that's unbelievable. I mean, I don't know, I don't know any of the history behind the race, but I I don't know how many rookies. I don't think any rookies ever won their debut race at at Pine Lake. That's that's pretty freaking cool to to be able to to say that. So yeah. Hats off to both. He <laughs> held it together and he ran and did everything right and brought it home. Like oh, yeah, completely, he, completely proud of the kid. He's yeah, yeah. He, he raced a perfect well. race. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah to, and that's hard. That's really hard to do as a rookie when you're jumping up with all the big guns. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. To have yeah, to look back and see see Justin Tate behind you, who's been racing pro for the last twenty years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He started racing the year I was born. Yeah, yeah, you had to be. You had to have been thinking like, "Oh man, I would have. What would I have been able to do in that mini mod if you if (laughs) if roles were reversed?" Yeah, and that was, you know, the whole point of building that sled was. I mean, our our goal was to to give to get a chassis that we could get both some seat time on. Um, Like he's to the age now, he's. I mean, he's up and coming and, and he's able to run the Sioux. So, you know, long-term goal, like we want him, obviously like he's going to be running the Sioux with us. Like him and I are going to run the Sioux, right? Like mm-hmm. that's kind of the goal, but he hasn't had much seat time on that, that chassis per se, you know, the snowcross tunnel ball kid, the Sioux platform. He's done, he's done qualifying and, and some rookie stuff at the Sioux, but, it just, it works, it handles a little bit differently than our cross country. So to put a platform together that he could get some seat time on and build some confidence and, and kind of know what it's going to do when we get to that big one mile oval in Michigan was the end goal. So it was not going to lie. It was really hard to, you know, bow out and say, <laughs> you know, Bo here, like ride this pony for the pro open race. But in the big picture, that you know, that's exactly what we needed to do. Is we needed to put him in a position where you know he could 
do the best he could with the best equipment that we could give him. And it, I mean, it showed he freaking knocked it out of the park. So yeah, I, I can't be more proud of the, of my brother. Like it's pretty cool. I'm jealous. Like I wish I could have been racing it, but <laughs> at the same time, I've been racing pro for how many years and I've had my opportunities. So he deserved it. How, uh, he worked hard. He's earned it. And, couldn't be more proud of them. How come you don't run a, a mod sled in the pro open Taylor? Like I've always kind of wondered that cause you guys, you probably have all the, the parts and, and the capabilities to do it, but you just seem to always run your stock sled in pro open. You know, there's a couple reasons for that. Um, we've, we do have a couple of mod sleds in Rozo. Um, obviously we have our Sioux sled, that one, we keep that one in the, in the shop and we only you know bring that one out for the Sioux and, that's the only track time it sees. We've got a couple others. Um, one out back we built a few years ago that I raced it in Lutzen, and I raced it at Pine Lake, uh, God, I don't know, 2017 or something. Mm-hmm. But it just, it, it makes things more complicated. I mean, our our team isn't overly huge. You know, it's the, the racing efforts that we have going. It's just myself, my dad, and my brother. Um, for the most part, Levi Novacek is, is a part of our team too. You know, the Novacek family from Rozo and, and they help out a lot, but it just, it takes so much time and energy to be successful in pro open class. And, you know, those mod sleds, they, they take time and it takes a lot of energy and resources to, you know, to set them up and to make sure they're dialed and, um, you know, change things out for weekend to weekend. So part of it is that, you know, we just don't have, we don't have a, you know, a big crew to, you know, put resources towards maintaining, you know, a full blown mod sled. Yeah. And we also kind of have the theory that keeping it simple is going to be more successful in the long run. You know, if we can get more track time with our stock sled, we can find issues sooner and hopefully correct them before we get to the stock the the pro stock final which ultimately is the that's kind of the pinnacle of our our racing is is you know getting the pro stock and and doing well in that class yeah that's where that's where there's more there's more money in that and and there's more recognition for doing well in, in the stock classes so it's just for us it makes more sense to put our efforts in that category and and try to do the best we can you know and there's there's definitely a chance that in the future we could we could expand our our pro mod program, but I think we'd have to we'd have to bring in a couple extra sets of hands just to help do maintenance during the week. You know, the more snowmobiles you get going racing, the the more work it takes. So yeah, a little like, short on the manpower. Yeah, and Kyle, like high high power or is high maintenance too? Yeah, big time. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Old old power is high maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, with our with uh, with pro, my my pro open was short lived out there this weekend. But after looking at the lap times on Saturday night and uh, comparing lap times, it was me, you, and me, you and Dan were all running within the same second. So going into mm. going into Sunday, I knew we were going to have a battle on our hands going into Sunday on how close we were in pro open and. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't disappoint <laughs> going into Sunday. No, it did not. <laughs> it was, no, it didn't. You you and got you got moved up a flight in pro open or pro stock qualifying, right? Because yeah, I don't know what what happened there exactly, but I remember going into staging and got directed to wherever my pit stall was or wherever you know off the line I was supposed to be. I don't know, eleven, twelve, something. And it originally put me in the third flight and I lined up in the third flight and there was, there was like eight of us in the third flight. And I remember Scott Schuster was looking down and he's like, looking around and he's like, could tell something wasn't right. And he came over and he's like, you're supposed to be in the second row. And I was like, Oh, okay. You want me to go up there now? <laughs> he's like, yeah, hurry up before they drop the green flag. So I was like, well, no, no. <laughs> okay, here I go. <laughs> Yeah, cause I yeah we were sitting there in the in the third flight there, getting ready to take off, 
And yeah, it was me and Dan and Taylor and Alex and Bobby. And I was like, fuck, this flight, this flight is going to be like a final. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to race against you guys in that flight. I might not have made it into the front row. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, during that qualifying run, I well, both on on Saturday in Pro Open and on Sunday in qualifying, I I was nervous. You know, there were a lot of fast guys out there, and and like Wesley was in my Wes Selby was in my in my flight on Sunday the qualifier and he was bad fast like that skidoo was just moving mm -hmm. and i was like oh my how am i gonna keep up with him mm. <laughs> you know like i was like god i gotta figure something out here like there's these guys are just on it like i'm i don't know if i can i don't know it's gonna be a, a tall steep climb to you know compete with these guys and you only got what two laps to, to try to figure it out too yeah yeah yep yeah, that was, yeah, that's it. You know, you're out there for the two qualifying laps. There was a little test track blown out off the side of the racetrack, but it wasn't the same. You know, you can't quite mimic the same mannerisms of, of that Pine Lake racetrack. So it was tough, you know, you gotta, I guess, assess and don't change too many things, you know, try to keep it as, you know, small changes as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, First, you, last thing you want to do is go backwards, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's it's weird on how like a test a test track here and a test track there. You can chase a setup and it can be totally off yep. to what what you want to be chasing. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. And I, you can kind of see that too. Like it happens at the at at the race. Like you you watch some of the the guys that are really close. Like they're right on that fringe you know, of being you know, say qualifying front row or, you know, being really close to the, the time that they want and they, they're not quite happy with where they're at and they go make a couple really big changes mm -hmm. and they wind up going backwards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the tricky thing with the ice racing and Pine Lake especially is like it, it takes such small, like small perfections that, that make it fast or make you fast, make your snowmobile fast. Yeah, some like, people just some people just go way way above and beyond, and they they can't they never get it right because they're just all over the board. Yeah, that like uh, that that makes me think of like a, a few weeks ago when you guys were out testing on the lake, and we had that little practice track kind of through the cattails there, and uh, my sled was my sled wasn't handling very good, and so I was really scratching my head, and then so I seen Taylor go out there, and I I didn't go out there to like get behind him or anything, I just wanted to go out there and watch him and see how his sled was kind of working. And he was kind of fighting the same things I was. And then so I went up and talked to him and yeah, we were like, yeah, the ice is, the ice is weird on yep. that test track. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Where if we wouldn't have had, if we wouldn't have had that conversation, there's a good chance you and I both could have been, Chasing oh, I got to figure, I got to figure out how to make that corner fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then you lose, you lose on the other 11 corners. Yeah. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. I, had, I had the same kind of a similar conversation with Alex too. Of uh, on a, a little practice track, he was like, "Man, my sled's really loose on D cell." Yeah. I said, "Yeah, mine is too." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, really? It's oh, it's it's maybe maybe it's just ice over there. It's not just my sled." Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I was fighting the deceleration on on, on Saturday really bad. I, I I don't know what it was. It just it felt it was weird. I I couldn't slow down for the life of me. <clears throat> that was one of the biggest biggest issues I had over the weekend too. Is it? And I don't know if it was the ice or what, but it was goofy. I had never felt felt that before. Normally, stopping power isn't an issue, but uh, yeah, that's that's odd because I knew I knew my slide was kind of loose under braking and loose through the corner. But yeah, it seemed like this weekend it was just kind of it was heightened a little bit on on D cell. But it it, se it sure seemed like Paul Brown his sled had had unlimited. Uh, traction power on deceleration. <laughs> yeah, I will say it was a lot of fun racing against that Catalyst chassis, you know, on, I think, Saturday in Pro, Pro Open. Um, it's hard to compete against those open sleds on a stock snowmobile. And uh, running running my cross country, I, I don't know where I was in the field. I was 
somewhere around that tenth place position. Yeah, I think it was. I was behind, <laughs> I was behind you and Herf um, when yeah. you guys had kind of gone back and forth. And yeah, I think we were in like tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. And, and yeah, I was. I watched you and Herf kind of swap back and forth once, two or three times. And it was. I was. Oh watching my their gosh, battle. was that <laughs> that was fun? Like it was that catalyst just worked. Like in the corners, of the, it it was that could go anywhere. Like he was all like he could, I don't remember where exactly it was on the track, but I got around him as we came out of a corner and then he must've tucked in right behind me and was in my draft going down a straightaway. And we were going around one of the sweeping corners and here he like slingshotted around me and was (laughs) right on the inside of me. And we were side by side going around one of the sweeping corners doing gosh, I don't know, 100 miles an hour, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like ski to ski. It's like you don't you don't get racing like that very often. And, you know, to do it at a high caliber, it was, God, it was fun. Yeah, ex- especially doing it with Herf, too. You know, he's he's smart enough to where he's going to be able to hold his line that whole time, and you're not even going to touch each other, too. <laughs> yeah, you can do it in a safe manner, you know, and, and not worry about having a bad outcome. That definitely makes it a big part of the fun. Yeah. Yep. For sure. <clears throat> so yeah, with the, the pro stock Taylor, we started, uh, we started front row and it was Paul and Herf got and and you, uh, got the jump on me. So going around like the first set of co- corners, I was in fourth, I was in fourth, you were in third. And then I was yep. able to, I was able to draft up on you on a sweeper and make a, make a pass kind of around the outside because yeah, God, you were gone. <laughs> you, I, you startled me when you came. Like I was behind. I remember being behind Zach and Paul, and I'm like, okay, I got. The, like I see these guys, and you know, we'll just tuck in, and we'll make make our way around the track. And then all of a sudden, here comes Gunner. Whoa! <laughs> from the outside, like what the fuck? <laughs> Well, I think well, it, it was, there you go. I'm not gonna catch him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, and then I I got up to Herf and Paul right there, and I'd say we were we were damn near three wide going around that left-handed sweeper because Paul had kind of got pushed out into the into the snow chips there a little bit, and uh, Herf was right on the inside of me, and I was able yep. to get around Herf there, and then at the start of that next straightaway, I was able to get past Paul, and then it was like. And then you just take a, a, be, a deep breath of just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Then like, you had clean air. Yep. Then you were good. Yep. Because, yeah, the there the ice chips hurt this weekend, yeah. and the snow dust was yep. horrendous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where I was like, I was like, okay, I got, I got Paul and Taylor right behind me. It's like, if they're going to stay this close to me, I mean, they're going to pay the price of just eating this snow dust <laughs> relentlessly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and to be quite honest, we did. It it was there. It was snow dust and ice chunks. Yeah. I think when I was going around Zach, it was, again, I don't remember where it was, but I'm, I, I was in a lean. Like, I was leaning off the sled. I had my knee out, and I'm, you know, holding it wide open, watching him. And I swear, he must have kicked up a softball-sized piece of ice, and it hit <laughs> me right on the inside of the kneecap. And my whole leg just went tingly. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that smarted. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, I think it was lap two, or maybe yeah, I think it was two, is when uh, me and Paul had kind of gone back and forth. He'd gotten back in front of me and uh, kind of right over in the first third of the track, kind of where I made that first pass on him. He threw mm-hmm. up like about a golf ball sized chunk and it cracked my goggle, mm-hmm. but the dual lens goggles I have, it cracked the outer lens. And no I, kidding. Yep. Yeah, it was total crack right down the middle, and I thought, oh shit, I can't, I can't be behind anybody with this crack in the lens. It'll, it'll fill up with ice, ice dust yeah. and whatnot. So, so that's when I got back around him, and then I never, I never let him get back in front of me from that point on. But yeah, but yeah. So did you swap goggles in the fuel stop? Yeah, in the did fuel you get a new pair. Yeah, in the fuel stop, I swapped goggles because I knew that there was a chance of how it worked out that maybe I was going to be close enough with you to where we were going to do battle. And I was like, yeah. if we do battle with anybody, I got to have some fresh goggles mm-hmm. on. Cause I can't, yep. I can't do it like this. So, so yeah, it got some fresh goggles on at the fuel stop there. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't get close enough to it for it, for it to even matter. <laughs> I, well, I figured it was going to be real close when I, so 
when you went in for fuel, I I was planning on taking a fuel stop that run because we I was in you know we had what was it we came around back going into the back bay you made a mistake in that in the that corner and you got into the duff a little bit and I was able to close a little bit of a gap and kind of draft you coming out of that back bay corner and then as we were coming around the weeds like I was able to tuck in behind you and you kind of I drafted you going down that straightaway mm-hmm. you know and I was able to slingshot around you just for like I think it was just that corner. Yep, yep. You know, that was kind of when the when that battle started taking place. And yep. I knew, I was like, okay, we're, like, we got three, it was three laps to go, three or four laps to go. And I'm like, it's, yeah, it we're, was... it's going to be, a, it's going to be a dog fight until the, the checkered flag. And so since I was in the snow dust, I was like, okay, yep, it, I better get in and get some fuel and get some clean air. And then you dove into the fuel stop and I was like, oh, <laughs> you took my line and I was like well okay we're staying out one more you know this is my shot for clean air this is, might be the only one I'll get for the whole race better make it count and, and yeah I you must have put was... a hell of a lap when Gunner went in for fuel you, <laughs> mu- you must have just rode like a son of a bitch because you <laughs> yeah you made up some time on that fresh air yeah and I when I went in for fuel I, that was all I was thinking about is I knew Gunner was coming like I know I know how deadly he is and I was like, he's going to be like, I was anticipating to come out of the fuel stop right behind you. So I was like, okay, when I get out of this fuel stop, I got to be right on his bumper and I got to be knocking at his door for the next two laps. That's the only way I'm going to make him be able to make a move. Yeah. And somehow it, I was able to make it out in front of you and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it was so like, so so yeah, we you made that one pass on me in the corner there, and you got pushed. You pushed yourself a little wide out in the snow, and I had cut back under you. And yep. Taylor's Taylor, I'm coming up alongside of him, and we both look at each other, <laughs> and we both kind of give each other a little head nod of yeah. like, of like, okay, it's it's on. Yep. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I seen Levi with your pit board that said pit. Yeah. And I thought like, man, maybe. Maybe he, maybe you have like a certain amount of fuel in. And so I'm thinking of this, like in that short three, four second span of where the pit board was to where the corner was, I was like, maybe Taylor has like a certain amount of fuel in and he needs to pit right now. So I was like, well, I'm a pit too. And then if we come out of the pit at the same time, then it's going to be all out battle side by side for the rest of the race for, yeah, for four laps. Yep. And then, so, so then I seen you didn't pit. And then I thought, like, I watch a lot of F1, and they talk yep. about uh, under the undercut sometimes. On if you pit like a lap earlier than your competitor, sometimes it works out to you'll have fresher air and you'll get out in front of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't the case. Um, I came sliding into the pits, and Andy Mack had a stick down, and I was locked up. And I came sliding into his stick and he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and so I had to, I had to sit there for like a second or two seconds looking at him like, like, Hey, I'm sorry. I hit your stick, but can I go? Can I go? Yep. <laughs> yep. Because I didn't want to just hit a stick and then just go because then you for sure get a penalty yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so I, Do knew, a I knew Chinese that. fire drill. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I knew I wasted at least a second or it two was, seconds. It was there. at least a second. But then, uh, our fuel stop went good. We dumped gas in like 14, 15 seconds. It was one of the most perfect fuel stops you guys had. Yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, my dad said that he time, he timed our fuel stop and he timed your guys' fuel stop of when you, when you started dumping fuel and they were both yeah. in that 14, 15 second range. So yep. that's when I was like, well, oh, God dang it. It was, it was on me then for wasting that second there. And then you putting in a heater lap to gain gain a second or two seconds there, and then that's yeah, what made up that, it was, that gap of two seconds that I just could not close. <laughs> it was dang close. You were there. I could feel you creeping up right with those last couple corners. I didn't know where you were. Like I didn't know how close you were, but I knew you were coming. And I was all I could think about was don't make a mistake. Don't go into the dust and don't give them a line to take that can take me out of it. Yeah, because yeah, when you're when you're that close, like any if you get pulled out into that snow dust at all, like oh, it, yeah. it takes a long time to get out of it mm-hmm. and get back into that groove. Yeah. So like, 
Yeah, not going to lie on that last lap. I was just like, uh, I wasn't, I was like, come on, just blow a belt. Just blow a belt. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had gained on you on that mm. second to the last lap from like maybe three or four seconds back to about two and a half seconds. So I could see I gained on you a little bit. But yep, I knew, and I can feel it. I knew it was like it was going to be hard to get that last two seconds because we were going identical speeds. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, we all saw it in the pits too. Like, oh, he made up a little more time. He's got one more lap. Mm-hmm. Like, how close is this going to be? Mm-hmm. Yep. Everyone saw it in the pits. Everyone saw it that was watching it. It's like, yeah. God damn, how close is this going to get? Yeah, I was I was full send, and I knew Taylor was full send too. <laughs> well, yeah, at, at the ninth hour, you know, that's, that's what, what it is. You're, yeah. you're giving it all you got. You know, it's, cards are on the table at that point. Yep. Yep, for sure. You got what you got, and, you know, what can you do with the hand you've been dealt, and how can you make it work? You know, it's a little bit of a chess match there. Yeah, and I've been I've been mm-hmm. behind you twice like that now with two two years ago when when you beat me, and it was like two or three laps there of, of being like three, four seconds behind you there. And, no, you've been solid having that pressure there behind you. You didn't make any mistakes at all. Yeah, I've... I'd like to say that I've always been that way, but that's definitely not the case. I I remember very vividly, you know, being early in the pro class and getting pressured and, and making many, many mistakes. So it definitely didn't come, definitely didn't come natural. I had to, I had to learn it the hard way many times. Huh. But Which it was, it do. was, a, yeah, it was a real fun, real fun race, you know, and, like we talked about after the event, it was. I hope it was fun for everybody that was watching because I had a real good time, you know, <laughs> battling going down the straightaways with you. Like, uh, I don't know, a little bit of a permadrin, right? Like, you know, it's going to be close, and it's like, okay, it's, it's go time. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, for sure. No, yeah, I'm watching it from the pits. Yeah, it was a damn good race. Yeah, I was I was wishing for a, a different outcome, but still, it was. It's like, oh, it's so close. Like, it, yeah, it was. It was wild. Yeah, well, Gunner, it's coming. I mean, you you've been there the past three years. Yeah. You're right on that. Like, <laughs> every year, the past three years, like it very it very well could have been your year. I know. Right? it's coming yeah thank thanks for saying that and uh i know it's just it's just like there's so much luck that goes into it too like i told somebody at the bar like it's just in a in a different dimension a flip of a coin in the in the last three years i'm of a three-time pine lake winner and two-time sioux winner yeah of just of of, of like those yeah. five races being so close mm-hmm. of just, yeah it's it's very close <laughs> I think that's what keeps that race so exciting. Like that race for me has been in the, in the realm of cross country racing. And I guess the world that I grew up in following my dad and everything he's done Pine Lake, like the, the big races were the 500, the Sioux State Marine 500, the cross country 500 and Pine Lake. Like those three were the big three of the year. You know, Pine Lake, everybody's excited to go racing. It's the first race of the year. And the competition's always super stiff. Mm-hmm. So, like that one, it's, it's the intensity's there, and it's always there, and you never know what's going to happen because it's, it is an unpredictable race, and there are so many luck factors that come into into play when you get into a, a hundred mile final like that. Oh yeah, it's even it's even crazy to think about on how much luck goes into it. Like Kyle, like you got to think your track, your chain, your belt, mm-hmm. any bearing you have. Yeah, bearings uh, are a big, big thing, you know. Even uh, even just throwing a stud, mm-hmm. throwing a stud into the cooler, like that's just – It, it yeah. all runs through your mind, like uh, rebuilding clutches. It's like, did I torque that? <laughs> 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 yeah. Or, yeah, tightening your track before the race. You know, did I get that jam that tight? Yeah, yeah, there's so many little things. Yeah. Did I, I tighten the rear axle? Am I going to lose a bogey wheel? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Am I leaking gear oil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. But no, it was a, no, it was a fun race racing against you, Taylor, because yeah, the, the two times that we did go back and forth, it was clean. And that's where, that's where I like racing 
you can make passes and you don't have to hit people like yeah you don't have to worry about you know getting banged up for going back to work the next day yep mm-hmm. yep for sure You're, for as crazy as it sounds doing you know what was it 110 miles an hour yep you know we're racing 110 miles an hour and you feel safe like yep. that sounds semi crazy to say out loud <laughs> oh it is crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> But like uh, this was a this was a stacked field that yeah. we had this year of 20, 26 pros out there, and then uh, Dylan uh, Dylan Stevens wasn't able to make it out there with us. So then it would at least be twenty seven too. So it was a bummer. Yeah. Dylan Dylan couldn't race, but but yeah, twenty six of us out there, and it's a it's a stacked field. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at the names in the field. Like it's <laughs> it's easy. I it's, I would be willing to argue with anybody that. You know, the guys that are showing up to that race are some of the fastest ice racers there are. Like, there are, and there's there's some really fast guys in champ. Um, you know, Blaine Stevenson being one of them. Mm-hmm. He's a good buddy of mine. But when it comes to ice lemons, like, it's border, like, I'd be borderline willing to say that it's, some of the fastest guys in the world on ice Yeah. Oh yeah. Like he oh, got, for sure. Yeah. For people Zach, that turn Zach right Zach on ice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, like Zach Erfindahl, the guy's won it three times. He's a 10 time pro points season points champion. Um, he's in the mix. You've got Dan Revering, you know, he's wicked fast. He's definitely a contender. Mm-hmm. He's been in the hunt for season points the past couple of years. You got Justin Tate, who's going to be in the Hall of Fame for all the accomplishments and accolades he's acquired over the years. You got Wes Selby. He's been racing for a long time, and he's accomplished a lot. Um, you know, and that list just keeps going on and on and on. Not, yeah, There's yeah, no not, shortage of talent Not going to lie, I, I was a little nervous of the of Ryan Faust coming back. because yeah. Oh, Ryan, and yeah, Ryan's Faust. Fast. The Fausts were back. You know, the Iceman. That guy's nickname is the Iceman. Yep. He's, like, naturally stupid fast on the ice. Yep, yep. And then uh, uh, um, uh, Alex Satine, he's yeah. Pine, Lake, yeah. yep. Pine, Pine Lake winner. He could, he could wick it up at any time, too. Right, Ross. Ross is, you know... Wicked fast on the ice too. So it's like there's so many fucking people this year that it was like just watching the race. Yeah. Me and Ben were just naming the numbers and the name was coming right behind them. So like there was like not a problem naming anybody out in the field. Yeah. Like, you knew everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. And it's like it really is anybody's race. Thank you. Oh, Any yeah. one of those big names could come away with winning that event. Yep. Like uh like last year. Uh, so you you won it two years ago, Taylor. But what you what you finish yep. last year? Uh, fourth. Last year I finished fourth overall. Yeah, so that's got to be tough from win, winning it the prior year and then not even uh, not even being on the podium the next year. Yeah, yep, yeah. and that's that's exactly how that race goes. Like mm-hmm. it's there's no guarantee that you're going to be you know up at the top three. It's a it's a challenge alone to get there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, going from winning it to just barely being off of the podium to winning it again, like the, you just never know what's going to happen. And <laughs> I don't remember who I was telling after the race, but like going into that pro stock final, I I didn't, I definitely didn't feel like I had, I had the the magic sled, you know, like it didn't feel like the the one that was going to win. Like it wasn't the, it didn't feel like the fastest, and. I didn't feel like I had my handling perfectly dialed. Um, like there were things that I still felt needed improvement, but I knew you had to be there at the end to to be successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's right? only so, so much testing you can do. Yeah, yeah. Like you just you gotta you gotta show up and you gotta be consistent and you you gotta not give up and just and, and keep being there. You know, and the more times you can be there the better your odds are of coming away, you know, on that top spot. Yeah. But you're, you're, you're a good testament to that, right? Like you're, you're damn consistent and you're, you're right there. You should be, well, you're, you're the hot hand to beat. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, true. 
But yeah, I could tell you my uh, my confidence coming into Sunday was at an all time low for cra- for crashing on Saturday like that. And yeah, to like every lap we came through that first turn, and then that it would have been like the fourth turn there where I crashed. I thought about it every lap. Where it was like, uh, and so I was. I could feel myself being. I was a little hesitant all day on Sunday if I didn't have that like that full send confidence that that I had like su- Saturday morning in the qualifier before that crash. Yep. So I think that. Yeah, that's that's a big part of it too. Yeah. You know, being confident in what you're doing is a big. That's a big thing as well. Yeah, because I had I I pride myself in like being in control and like not crashing, and then to have those two crashes kind of come about both on Saturday. I was like coming in on Sunday morning. It's like, man, I hope I remember how to ride a sled still <laughs> to be, even be competitive today. <laughs> yeah. Well, you backed it up. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sunday was hundred percent a better day than Saturday. Yep, yeah. For sure. Yep. You definitely backed it up. Huh? But yeah, two, yep. 2.4 seconds behind you, Taylor. <laughs> uh, yeah. Son of a well, gun. One of these days it's going to be the other way. <laughs> yeah yeah but, and then uh and then these new guys we got coming up into pro too mm-hmm. evan peppel and and your brother Bo, like they're both yeah. they're both top top five and top 10 guys this past weekend so and jesse allstrom yeah and jesse, uh, jesse allstrom from the, the semi-pro was, jesse was making some moves there yep so. yeah and that's good to see you know there's there's a lot of talent in the field you know like as far as cross country is concerned like the sport's not dead by any means. There's a lot of really good talent that's coming up, and you can see it. Like, there's some fast kids coming through the ranks. Yep. Yeah. So that's really exciting to see. Oh yeah. You know, especially with where, you know, how much focus is on, you know, Pine Lake, for example, and how many entries we had, uh, not just in the pro class, but from a venue overall. Like it was, it's a big event. Oh yeah. And yeah. It seems and to grow kids, every year. Which is awesome. You know, like we're, you know, I, I definitely don't see a decline in, in cross country interest in the next five years. You know, I, I see us growing, you know, we're, we're in a growth spurt right now, which is awesome to see. Mm-hmm. Yep. Heck yeah. So yeah, are you, uh, it's going to be, it's looking like uh, park rapids for the next race for you. And then off to the Sioux. Yeah, we've got a weekend off here for Eagle River, which if I remember right, you guys are heading over to run that. Yep, yep, we're heading out on Friday for that. So with with the Cataret team. So yeah, that'll be good. We'll be we'll be watching from home. We're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna have a shop day. We've got some work to do on our enduro stuff. Um, make sure our Sioux sleds all in check. Uh, make sure all of our 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 notebook and our parts and. Everything is looking looking good, um, and just kind of prepping for the rest of the year. I think with this late start, we've we've been lucky enough to have time, but it's delayed everything. And now that it's here, I think it's going to be a, a busy winter. I I foresee I foresee us being being real busy and you know going from event to event to event. So. Yep, for Try sure. Try to take advantage of those weekends and, and be prepared for the races that we were committed to and try to do the best we can. So, okay. Yeah, we'll go to Park Rapids two weeks from now and then head to Rozo, dump all of our cross country sleds in the shop, throw our Sioux sled in the trailer, and hightail it to Sioux St. Marie, Michigan for the that big one mile ice oval. <laughs> <laughs> that monster of a track that's so fun to watch for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> that race, I've. You know, I've got a lot of a lot of friends around home. I live south of Fargo, um, southwest of Fargo, out in Kindred, North Dakota, out in farm country. And uh, you know, some some friends from back back in this area. Are, you know, I want to come watch a race. What race should I come watch? I'm like, well, there's a lot of good ones, but if you can only do one, like, you should probably come out to Sault Ste. Marie. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, for that sure. that big oval is it's it's a different world. Oh, yeah. That thing is, it's so cool. You know, the, the team aspect, like there's, there's more to that race than just, you know, a fast driver. Like there's, you got three drivers and seven or eight crew guys behind you. 
And the only way you can do good is if everybody does their job to the best of their ability. So it really, really puts the, elevates the, you know, the, the focus on, on what's happening and, and everybody's got vested interest in, in doing the best that you can. And it makes it real fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After we, after we cross Pine Lake off, all, like for the last two, two years, it's like, okay, Pine Lake's done. It's like, okay, next one on the list is Sue. That's, yep. the, that's the next big one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that. <laughs> you know, you get done with Pine Lake and it's like, okay, it's, that's done. We've got, you know, obviously there's usually a couple other um, series events that we have going on, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, where the focus goes is Sault Ste. Marie. Sault Ste. Marie, and then also making sure you have something competitive for the cross country 500. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, the big three, you got to do your best, to try and show up for those runs. Huh. Heck yeah. Yeah, good. Good, good talk, Taylor. Good, <laughs> yeah, good, good yeah. Stuff. <laughs> it's pretty entertaining to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like uh, Brady Deardall had said that at the bar on on a Sunday night. He, because me and Taylor were standing there talking. He's like, "If this were twenty years ago, and you had a players top guy and an Artie Cat top top guy talking, it'd be." It wouldn't happen. <laughs> it, w- it wouldn't be talking. It'd be fifth. Yeah. Fifth to come. <laughs> it's like we're we're all out there trying to achieve the same thing, and I mean we're we're gonna see each other every other weekend for how many more years? So you might yeah. as well be try to be friends with the people. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a pretty good testament to uh, you know the the sport that we're in, right? Like cross country or going to racing in a whole isn't it's not big enough to be like super cross. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think it goes a long ways to, you know, help, help each other grow and benefit and, you know, help each other be competitive, you know, help everybody grow. And it's, it's ultimately good for the sport. Um, I don't, I don't see the, I don't see the need for, you know, for, the dirty looks and the the aggressive, you know, <laughs> comments and, and such like that. It's, you know, we're we're all out here on our own dime trying to do what we enjoy and and go home safe at the end of the weekend and you know do it again the following weekend. Yep. yep. It, yeah, it's hard to hate the guy standing next to you when you're both suffering in the thirty below yeah. weather. Like we're <laughs> yeah. all here watching the same race. Yeah, we're all suffering yeah. together. Like. Yeah, we're all just trying to survive. Yeah, <laughs> you and I hope when I hope when we all hang up our helmets and we're we're done competing, it you know it can be fun. You know, I've I've got a little guy of my own. He's going to be three years old, and I I mean, there's I'd say there's a good chance that I'm going to be sticking around racing. You know, <laughs> longer than I'm going to be competing. Oh yeah, and I you know I hope that you know I can still have those conversations with people. You know. You know, have fun and, and reminisce on some of the good times and some of the bad times that I've had with, you know, with some of my fellow competitors. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's all good. At, it's fun. You look at your old man. How long has he been doing it, to, you know, his whole life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He started, so he started to sit back to Justin Tate. Him and Justin Tate started at the same time. They started in, I want to say, 96, 95, 96. Yeah, and he, my dad just hung up his helmet. He hung it up after our 2020 Sioux, Sioux win. He, you know, that was a good breaking point for him to kind of step away from racing. Mm-hmm. And then, said, yep, you know, I'm done. You know, I've got Bo and Taylor and, you know, I can still be involved and focus my efforts on being competitive without having to go out when it's 40 below and, freeze my fingers exactly mm-hmm. yeah but uh, yeah our, our dad is still going at it yeah. not not at the pro level by any means but for masters 50 it's still, oh, still yeah. a hell of a commitment for him at 50 i think he's 58 now yep, he's, he's 58 still, still giving her hell yep. yeah <laughs> yeah and that's good mm-hmm. that's real good yeah still winning pine lake races <laughs> <laughs> it's the masters 50 but it's still a pine lake race yeah. and he's taking home the hey, first place a win's a win hell yeah at least one Arlo win one. Win. Exactly. <laughs> At least one Arlo one. And didn't crash. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, thank uh, thanks for the time tonight, Taylor. It was good to good to talk to you, and I'm sure people the people that are listening are gonna like our kind of our pro banter back and forth on how it kind of went for us. So yeah, totally. Yeah, I hope so. It was uh, it was fun. I, you know, um, thanks for thanks for reaching out. You know, I've I've tuned into your guys' podcast here for a couple episodes. I haven't gotten to listen to all of them, but I've uh, I've tuned into a few, and you know, I enjoy listening to it. Heck yeah. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Appreciate that. <clears throat> yeah. Keep up the good work, guys. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you, yeah, too. you too. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you had a hell of a race on Sunday. Yeah, it was fun to watch. Yeah, well, it was, it was fun to be on the track. You know, hope we can keep doing it for a few years anyway. Sure. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah we, got, we got quite a few more years left in us. Yeah, I sure hope so. <laughs> uh, all right, well, sounds good, guys. Yeah, Take thanks, care, Taylor. and uh, we'll be chatting later, I suppose. All right, we'll see you at Park Rapids. Yep, sounds yep. good, Taylor. All right, bye. bye. See you. You know, if people want some conflict, you know, they're, we're bringing Brady on the show. <laughs> that guy is the biggest shit talker to me. <laughs> True. Yeah, it, Every time, if it's people, like, if he's like your brother beats you. You know, it's like, yeah. If people <laughs> want the head-to-head drama, uh, that it's it's yeah. between you and Brady. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, we're not gonna get it out of the Taylor Bunky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you get me and Brady in here. <laughs> get you and Brady going. Yeah. So he, he winds me up sometimes. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, that was that was a good talk. Oh yeah. Good. Real yeah. good call. Mm-hmm. I told I again. I told Taylor like a half hour interview, and we had him on the phone for about fifty minutes. Jeez. <laughs> oh, hello. Hey, Vince. <laughs> How's everybody doing? This is Vince Van Slyke. This is our uh, five minutes with Fox. Yep. Well, five to however long with Fox. Yeah. Well, we're well. We'll good. we'll set a timer here, Vince. I'll text. Uh, I'll text Jesse on. We'll be with him in fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> how how was your weekend, Vince? <laughs> Well, it was good. I didn't uh, give the people's elbow to the ice like Gunner did. So <laughs> yeah, been why lot, not? Been a lot cooler if you did. Yeah, exactly. Well, I wasn't that mad at the ice. So. <laughs> yeah, they didn't talk shit to me. So you got the nitro all set up for ice mode and no race. Yeah. Are you scared of the cold? <laughs> I froze my fingertips. Oh, oh, yeah, I got, oh yeah, I got frostbite too. Yeah. I don't know why anybody would go out and do that kind of dumb shit. No, so. it was it was miserable. Mm, yeah, it was wild to, to stand out there when it was that cold. <laughs> I'm still I still haven't recovered. <laughs> what are you talking about? Your hood was like twice the size of everybody's butt. <laughs> yeah. Still didn't help. It's, it's fast as shit though. <laughs> <laughs> I, like on the on the gen on Brody's Gen Two, the the speedometers are off. Oh like, yeah, they're oh way yeah, off. yeah, they're so, off. No laughing. way. I was laughing at my my white one. I was watching the speedometer on the straights, and I was more keeping an eye on the RPM or whatever, learning. And uh, I looked at the speedometer, and it's past 120, like, just pegged out oh, yeah. on the needle. I was like, yep. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. I buried the second day. I buried the, the Speedo, too, on the old 600. Buried 120, <laughs> bouncing off the needle at the bottom. I'm like, this yeah. is the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> second coolest thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then the guy came up after after the race. He's like, are you Kyle? I was like, yep. He's like, is that your brother's red machine there? I was like, yep. He's like, you know that thing goes 111 miles an hour on the gun? Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that guy was like, holy shit. And the Colin's like, Gen 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy, yeah, he was clocking us out of the out of the cattails, coming back towards the towards the finish line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Colin got 111 mile an hour on that, that straight. You should have you should have raced I mean, in pro open. I know. That, so that's there the was a lot of horsepower in the air, so yeah, it's 125 from factory. So but the way they're the geometry on them and stuff is they're super wide and yeah, you, you know, you can make the the track resistance and stuff is like like pretty much nothing. You can push that sled on the ice. Yeah. You know, barely barely pushing on it. So So Vince, you're Vince, you're 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 pretty smart. Um kind of a fabricator. Yeah. Kind of Let's a fabricator, I would say. So okay. what we need to do is put my three cylinder four stroke engine 
in our 1997 ZR440 chassis. I'm sure it bolts right up. <laughs> if we could, if we could put that motor in that chassis, I think it would, it would dominate. I don't know. I think it'd be like a wet noodle by the time you put that kind of power in the thing. <laughs> it's not like there's any overstructure. I don't know. Like I, I had a blast on that 440 on Sunday. <laughs> We'll and just fucking put it in there and like put like four torque arms on it, so then you don't have to have the overstructure. That'll yeah. work. I, I don't think you've ever seen a free body diagram. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not how this works. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, Vince, you you your nitro would have probably done pretty good on uh, on Saturday, but man, was it cold! I don't know how how much fun it would have been being that cold though. But well, I would have put my big windshield on, but I would have feared that it would have folded into my face. So, <laughs> so you didn't, yeah, you didn't race this weekend, but, uh, uh, what I wanted to talk to you about was super, uh, super cross. Oh, it was Ooh, a mutter. I do like dirt bikes. Full blown mutter in San Francisco. And oh yeah, big time. Vince, Vince is a cross country dirt bike guy, you know? So like, <laughs> I bet you Vince is on the same page as me here too. That if you take a top five GNCC guy, you put him in that Supercross in the mutter, I guarantee he wins and he laps the field. Oh, easily. Yeah, like you put like, I don't know about Stu. Like, honestly, I don't think he's the greatest mud rider. But you do like, uh, Josh, like Josh Strang or... Uh, Josh Toth or Thad Duvall or... Yeah, like those kind of guys that like when it's good conditions, they aren't always up there. Like, but when the conditions are just absolute trash, they show up. Like, I bet that they would probably have waxed those guys. Yeah. Did you fall over again and rolling around now? <laughs> you made no, one sorry, I, of glass. <laughs> I had to get the pieces off the grill. It's just calm down. I, I seen Brody turning you up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he was a little quiet. I'm the tech well, guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so yeah, that was that was the one super cross take I wanted Vince to Vince to input on. I still need oh, to watch that. Do we have race. any tech questions? Uh, there. Yeah. The the yeah the the, the dial thing. No. Secret. No. That's a secret. Okay. Secret. Oh shit. Good thing I didn't know what it's called. Yeah. The cross. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Link. The cross. Just, link. That's not it. Come on. Just calm down. Yeah. Uh, no, there was <laughs> there was one tech question, but it was a, a long one from. Uh, um, the guy that messaged me on Instagram. Uh, we'll save okay. that for next week because it was a long. It was a oh. really good question, and we don't have Vince for the longest time today. So yeah, we'll yeah. save it for next week. Well, why not? Because well, we got other important people to talk to. Well, <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the strawberry blonde baby boy that's fast as shit on a skidoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got some. Uh, Extremely interesting looking KYVs on that sled too. They were Fox this weekend. Yeah, they're act- it was spelled F O X. I'm not sure yeah. how that yeah. translates yeah. from Japanese, but yeah, super weird. Huh. But yeah. Oh, uh, oh, Vince. I with the uh, Shop Talk podcast fantasy. VS, yeah. VS3 sitting in fourth position. Very true. hell yeah. Almost yeah, podium. 80, Eighty-three people. Yeah. See, I told you I was the Nicoletti of this podcast. <laughs> huh. who, who who won uh cooper kangas god dang it yep but i mean you <laughs> you just won this weekend like there's no prizes given away per race it's all for the end of the year yeah you know no i know yeah. i know um so yeah hmm. um yeah if you if you get to talk to your boss at fox there on kind of what if fox is willing to help us out with this at all like we have yeah, he's up in Canada so. today now. So, oh really? Yeah, I think there's like a dealer show or a snow show. I don't know. Oh, how um, how's your how's your Dakar stuff doing? Uh, well, we are in the lead by about eight minutes right now. Holy shit! Oh, nice. nice. So yeah, there's I think three days left. So hopefully it all goes well. And so like there, this is stuff that you assembled and you sent to them and they put on and like, are they changing this or like taking this apart at all during the race or? No, like- no. I, I went down there and we tested before they 
shift it. Like we were literally testing up till I think the day or so before they put them in a crate and shipped them over. But like they're, they're not doing any like internal changes during the race. No, nope. no, I did all that ahead of time. Like they're changing like clickers and preload and stuff based on what the uh, course is kind of looking like for the day. But yep. that that's it. They're not like doing anything else. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So v- Fox VS3 suspension leading the Dakar. That's sweet. Heck that's yeah. pretty damn cool. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No. Huh. What's the snowmobile season looking like this year, Vince? Are you going to get out and do some racing? Uh, I don't know about racing. I'll be gone for Park Rapids because, uh, well, I'll be at King of the Hammers. I'll be doing mm-hmm. desert things. Nice. Pretty but cool. We'll see. Maybe later in the year, but also, like, it's like $1,000 to do this, and that just sounds dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that was you got to be up there the day before because nobody knows how to use computers and all this other dumb shit and have a bunch of orange crap, even though it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I didn't I did, have, it's so dumb. I didn't I have just any don't orange on my jacket at all this on Sunday. I know. Did, uh, you, yeah. did you notice that? Did you see my bright? I did. Orange? I saw that. Did you see my bright orange HJC helmet? Ninety dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety dollars for a I helmet. Did, that passed tech rule. Oh hell yeah! It's got the. It's up to date. It's just cheap she as hell. Smells twenty two oh five. I I, I yep. imagine that I got so many laughs, like because. A HJC, a ninety dollar HJC <laughs> helmet, and I'm like, you know, you've got pictures taken and stuff, and you, it's just that bright fucking orange helmet. Yeah, that's just dirt cheap. <laughs> I don't buy fancy ones anymore because I smash them. No, like look at that four hundred dollar helmet. Yeah, right, right. there, all that's smashed how, up. I have like four of them in the basement <laughs> that are just. It's like, yeah, that was like six hundred bucks, and it's just smashed. Yeah. So, well, I mean, did you die? <laughs> No, but I did buy a ninety dollar HJC helmet. <laughs> he's, he's well, you haven't crashed with it yet. So yeah, he's the we'll, only we'll one talk at the after table. the first crash. He's the only one at the table that hasn't crashed. That didn't crash this weekend. Yeah, you were close though. <laughs> In a couple corners, you were pretty high. That inside ski was yeah, up there. it lifts. So it's, Vince, I got to talk to you about some spring stuff. So oh boy, yep, it lifts. What do you mean? Like you're getting it's too soft. So those fucking. Even with your new heavy sway bar? Yeah. He was pretty damn high when my, he was pushing my springs it in the corners. are tiny. How much what what are your springs right now? One twenty. Oh Jesus. <laughs> they were a hundred last <laughs> year, so then I just keep up on them. Oh my year. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get at least like some one forties or something yeah, like that. That's been... what that's what we run in our ninety seven and that thing handles really nice, so yeah, and how much track do you have on the ground? Mm, it's hard to say. I made an adjustment on Saturday. just the bottom side, uh, the front, the front arm. I lifted. <laughs> yeah, just the just no, the rubber. I'm just yeah, just the yeah, rubber. You just, you just got the bottom of the track on the ground, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just the rubber. I took some off the ground. So. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you must have. I mean, you're more. like doing the. You're swerving, like warming the track up. You know, like IndyCar stuff <laughs> on the parade lap, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I I took it pretty slow the first couple laps. Well, you know, our heats are only two laps, so it's hard to do that. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't want to make a mistake. So I think maybe that's <laughs> where, like, I was doing everything super tight. So maybe that's where you see me lifting a lot. But by, like, the end of the trail class or whatever, it was, had a good line picked out and I didn't have no lifting or anything. Yeah. So. Hmm. Heck yeah. <clears throat> huh. Well, Maybe, good. maybe Vince will be able to get us hook, hooked up with calling like a Dakar winner. Mm. That'd be cool. That'd be sweet. <laughs> he, I don't know. They, they're all, uh, the amount of English they speak is yeah. pretty limited. Yeah, so. okay. <laughs> the, the that car. year and a half of French I had in high school didn't pay off at all. Mm. Well, French <laughs> is, you know, not the coolest speaking language. <laughs> well, I was convinced I was moving to Canada, so. Ah. Uh. Become really? a communist in high school? Yeah. What are we gonna do in Canada? Become a I communist. Don't know. Not be here. <laughs> <laughs> go work for Bombardier. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Go 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 hang out with Joe. Turn left up at that whatever they call it track. It's got like eight teams. names. Yeah. Well yeah, I know it's Valcor, but there's like nine hundred other names oh, with it. So. Yeah. Beaujeur. Yeah. That's Polaris's plant is Beaujeur, I think. They had a plant back there or some shit hmm. back in the day. Yeah. In Canada? 
Yeah, I think that it was like the engine plant back in the day or some shit. I think you're talking out of your ass. Dude, Dude I just fucking look seen what, it. Look uh, what Tre- Trevor Davison just <laughs> snapchatted me. Fox Zero Pro for Kyle. There we go. It even that's the exact same shock that's in the ass end of my sled. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Say that guy. Tell him he knows his shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got some more to work on now from one of my buddies. So. Well, getting into actually, it's it's a uh, it's a ZR. Sorry, <clears throat> it's a ZR four forty shocks. Oh. I think okay. it's got another crash on it too. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to have to get you a set here. We're already making plans for Pine Lake uh, next year. So get a fresh. Only 360 in three days. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to start minus, start taking baseballs to the chest because I was getting <laughs> pelted with fucking ice behind oh, bro. Yeah, I, should, I should do the same. I was getting pelted by you. I got to learn to duck my head more. Yeah. Just like that. Uh, got to tighten up. Got to yeah. toughen up. Yeah. Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, it'll be fighting talk show hosts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Price is wrong, Bob. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel trying to put the skid frame in an old wedge or Gen 2. <laughs> Just go to your home. <laughs> Don't you want to go home? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, because you got to put all four bolts in on those y- old things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah we're not privileged like you are, Gunner, with your slide action. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Props to the Articat engineer that came up with that. <laughs> well, it was funny because me and Brady were talking about it at the at the bar after the race. He's like, "None of them Articat guys wanted to use the sidekick." I was like, "That's why they came up with that quick touch, <laughs> so they didn't have to fight with the fucking bolts on yeah. the side." Even uh, Dust, Dustin Dorn just hit me up today trying to get some sidekick stuff for uh, some Alaska guys. Oh yeah. So yeah. I gave I gave him Brady's number. They are the bee's knees, sidekick, side kick stands. They are sweet. They work. They work. What was that? I just got a piece of wood. What? I just use a piece of wood. Oh. oh. oh you, got, you got an echo you got an echo behind your right. Oh, sorry. I I set set my phone down. You <laughs> fell over. <laughs> oh, the whole thing up. Fell down a well. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. But yeah, Vince, yeah. It, was a, it was it was a fun Pine Lake track though. You would have had a blast yeah. on that. That's what I heard. It was a blast. That's what I heard. Like, is it still set up? Uh, no, we got yeah, we got some snow today, so there'd probably be a little dusting of snow out on in the groove, but. But maybe. they don't like knock down the berms or anything, do they? No, no, and like you'd be surprised when was when were you up here last for the race? Was it two years ago? I've never been to Pine Lake race. Oh yeah, you never raced Pine Lake. Yep. <clears throat> I I think I've been up there. I don't. I can't. Like I've been up there testing and stuff, but yeah, I've never even been up there right before the race. I think last year I was up in Fertile with uh, oh. Wes and Jesse testing, <clears throat> and then it was Pine Lake weekend, and I was like, yeah, I'm just there's no point in me hanging around. Like, I'm just gonna go home. So. Yeah. Um, it was, it was weird. Like Kyle, like, uh, we didn't chew through the ice in a single spot. No, there's no water on the track. Yeah. Well, how could there be? It was negative a billion. Yeah. But even for us to like, we usually chew through the, through the ice in some corners, you know, but we didn't yeah, chew through yeah. in a single spot on the track. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, huh. I think because it was, yeah. So, so freaking cold and wide. Yeah, t- wide. true. It wasn't just a railroad track the but, whole time. No, but, that, that does make yeah. sense. Maybe like in a few of the like little sharp corners where it was just one lined, maybe the ice was so it was hard. hard and <clears throat> frozen from being that cold. But, I think so. But like... It, well, and with it being exposed, I'm sure it made ice again overnight with it being that cold if it was getting thin. Oh, yeah. It was probably yeah, making probably ice did. during... That like... Could, I didn't think intermission. That. Yeah. Plow yeah. bikes. You guys probably ice. made ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're laying ice down as you're driving over. Right. It. Yeah. yeah. If right. only the suit could it's do like, that. <laughs> yeah. They're like upside down Zamboni. <laughs> it just needs to be negative 38 with the windshield. Yeah. Well, no, we've, me and my dad checked that because, you know, on like, if you drive a vehicle on the dirt when it's cold out, it makes frost. It drives the frost down. But we tried it with, uh, on a snowmobile track, we had out on the lake. We were going across the lake like that. 
and you'd think that maybe the the sled would drive the ice down where you'd been driving, but it didn't. Hmm. It didn't change it at all. Hmm. So hmm. that was the the more you know. Yeah. Fun fact. Science. Yep. Science. I think you guys might be getting a little too into this ice racing stuff. <laughs> just some, just some a nice shit over here. Yeah. yeah. Just doing ice science. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lifestyle. Yeah. That it Perfect. is. That it is. Yeah. <clears throat> huh. No, heck yeah, Vince. Um, yeah. Yeah. Any, those... any other top secret stuff you've been working on that you have had to, you want to break any NDAs on or, or what? No, not yet. No. Maybe next year. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Huh. Well, okay. I don't know. It's King of the Hammers week next week, so. So, yeah, you fly. I leave Monday. Oh, you leave Monday for the desert. Yep, yep. You going to watch Eagle River? Um, I don't know. When is that? This coming weekend, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, it is? Is that going to be on flow? Yep. Oh, well, maybe. I might turn it on. Yep. Yeah, you'll, you'll watch your boy in the Pro Enduro. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're going to be out there. You got to... Oh, God, I still have to build shocks for Cataract, too. I need to ask him what he wants for a sue length because, like, I'm going to be gone. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you better get that done. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sounds kind of important. <laughs> Sorry, Greg, yeah. they're on my shelf right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you how to build them over the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put the thing and the other thing. I just <laughs> call it There's a shaft, a tube, a block, and seals. Right, right. Don't put the Pretty seals much. on the outside. <laughs> you, you pour all the fluid in. You see all those bubbles? You can't have those bubbles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to suck them out with Destination a Destination cavitation. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Heck yeah, Vince. Um, 20 minutes with Vince. Holy. Yep. I know. Yep. Vince is like, if of anybody that watches Pulp Max, is Vince the, the Phil Nicoletti of Shop Talk Podcast or the JT? I have no idea. No, I had a whole time Phil because <laughs> JT is not bad enough. <laughs> Some, sometimes he is when they're talking about Vince Freeze. That's true, but everybody hates that guy. Yeah. 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 Fuck that guy. <laughs> out there giving me a bad name. <laughs> oh, yeah, Vince. <laughs> No, I don't even know who this I is. Didn't, I didn't say fuck you. I said Vince Freeze. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Huh. Well, okay, Vince, we'll let you get back to, to what you and Hannah are doing, whatever you guys are doing. Yeah, we're going to eat some pizzas here. Oh, okay. Hell yeah, race we're, diet. Sorry, yeah. sorry we're cutting into your supper then. It's okay. Okay. Well, actually, I cut into it. We used the pizza cutter you guys did. So. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, you could leave now after that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bro, bro, give, give him a laugh. Like, yeah. Give him a laugh for the... Uh, it's clapping instead. Yeah. I thought that was the laughter one. Oh, well. I think the orange one is laughter. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sweet. Now I have you. a studio yeah. audience. Yeah. Uh, we'll give Vince. We'll, uh, maybe we'll give you a call from the desert. Maybe if that's, got that's time. a possibility. Well, let's see. If, well, yeah, if you're gonna do it during the week, that's possible. So maybe a mon, maybe the Monday night or Tuesday night of next week, again. Yeah, yeah. Not Monday night. I'll be busy that night. But if it's Tuesday night, there's a possibility. Okay, sure. And we'll have to deal with we'll a time see. change, won't we? Oh yeah. Yeah, because it'll. Well, I'll be two hours behind. So. Oh okay. Yeah. So it'll be. Yeah. Six o'clock here. It'll be four o'clock there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Math. <clears throat> Science. Send me some more fucking cool <laughs> VMAX 4 pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> Heck yeah. Okay. Thanks for, thanks for the call again, Vince. We appreciate it. Hey, uh, the audience, thanks for calling. Yeah. The, really? audience, the yeah. audience appreciates it. The audience likes the, the VS3 yep. tech we'll, talk. Yeah. We'll get more into the tech next week or if you're well, yep. busy. You know, they better. So, yep. <laughs> we like to learn. I mean, we're not paying Vince for nothing to get these interviews in. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Friendship. Hopefully by next year I can quit my day job. So. <laughs> it's fucking 
20 bucks a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like 1-800-COLLECT over here. I'm practically Jeremy McGrath. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't believe what Vince charges us to, to call him. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lose the house pretty soon. We won't even be able to do the podcast, okay? <laughs> Uh, okay. All right, guys. All right, Vince. Have a good night. All right, you too. Mega flow. <laughs> Mega flow. <laughs> uh, I still think we talked to him for too long. I don't know. Vince, <laughs> no. Vince is always good to talk to. Oh, yeah. He's got some. He's always got that's some cool good stories. Stuff. You know the car. Yeah, that's f- yeah. yeah. Leave yeah. my eight minutes. Totally. The shit he does is pretty pretty cool. <clears throat> I won't say that to him though. But, <laughs> you know, be on his back. I'll say. Okay, well, how long have we been going for? Uh, two hours. Almost. Almost two hours. Wow. Hour 55. Okay, so we're waiting for the kid to respond. This yes, it? yes it? So, Kyle, how, how'd the weekend go for Grover Racing? Good, good. Uh, so, yeah, Colin had a really fast machine. Um, mm-hmm. Really fast. Super fast. Yeah. He looked, he was, he was hauling the mail out there on that Gen 2. Yeah, he's... Really, really fast. <laughs> like for for classic class, and then he just joined sport. There was like twenty three kids in sport or whatever, and he ended up getting second because uh, the second day he thought it was three laps, but it was actually only a two lap heat. So he just kind of set the cruise on the first lap, and then they waved him the white flag, and he was behind four people. So he's like, "Shit!" He fucking got going. Ended up taking second. So yeah, um, that's good for him for a 25 year old machine yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> yeah and he's getting really good mile an hour out of it you know 111 on the on the gun and on the gps on saturday it was a little windier so he got 112 on gps really i thought it was windier on sunday it felt like it definitely was yeah it might not have been so much in our favor the oh. way it was coming mm, maybe <clears throat> the mile long straights were true yeah i was left. faster sunday yeah, yeah. Oh, so. Colin was fast for Saturday. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because it seemed like the wind was coming straight out of the west, and, and we it, had that one straightaway coming straight west. I never did turn my GPS on to figure out what my sled was running or whatever, but yeah. uh, doesn't matter. I ended up so they they started us wrong or whatever for our classics. Yep. So Colin should have been in the the second flight on Saturday while he was in the first flight. And he ended up beating me. I came in second. And then uh, Brody won his class, won his flight. Yep. So <clears throat> how it worked was on Sunday, they listed Colin as the second flight winner and then me as the first flight winner. So yep. we both had one point. And then the second day, they messed it up again where I started in the second flight. Colin started in the first flight. So that shouldn't have been that if it was both first places, you know. Oh, we sure. should have started in the first same flight. That's where the points got off, yep. and that's where it screwed Brody, the points, what how we had to figure that out. Yep. So, yeah, it was but, Colin first, me second, Brody third. Yep. That's how it is. So, yeah. Yeah, and then I really want to, like, nobody really acknowledge it. So that's another thing about this past weekend. Like it's so hard to acknowledge everybody that was at the course and stuff like that. But, uh, the guys that were, you know, are always kind of in the shadows. Um, the Geislers, um, that run the classic class, Mm -hmm. they, uh, they've been around racing for years and years, even like way back into the USXC stuff when it was like 440 class, they were running 440s and the classic stuff. And, uh, they had a couple XC 700s this weekend, and they said that uh, they also got 111 miles an hour out of a wedge chassis XC, which is wicked fast. Yeah, that's wild wild fast. And nobody really ever acknowledges, you know, the kind of, you know, underclassmen that, you know, doesn't, they don't really promote their stuff at all. They don't do a whole lot of social media, but those guys are giving her, like, 111 is yeah that's yeah they're doing something right yeah right yeah so i just wanted to give them guys a shout out and then uh 440 went good colin won his uh uh flight or his heat yeah so he won the he won the sea heat yep and then uh we had just uh picked up a guy you know last week to run our sled so since we decided we were going to run it and uh he ended up you know sixth place which is you know he was at least he was there. You yeah, know, we yeah. had a rider. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, 
So the A main, that was for B, and then A main, um, it went good. So, I mean, we all had good starts. Yeah. It seemed like it was dead even across the board when we started. And uh, where where were you coming out of turn two? Uh, so I think I was in f- third behind Evan Peppel. Oh, well, because once we got out of turn two, then I was in second behind Peppel going – Oh, I, I don't know if I was that you. I kind of cut down on the inside of. Yeah, and, and then oh, okay. and you pulled on me out of the corner. Yeah, I. And then that's where Tate started pushing me too. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the bog, so I watched you and Evan go on the third sweeping corner and then into the ninety. Yep. Watched you and Evan go wide, and I kind of tucked in so maybe Tate would go around me. Yeah. But he never was able to get around me, so I just tucked it in and then. Uh, followed you guys into the the hairpin leading out to one of the straights oh. and uh it that's when I started to figure it out a little bit and then that's where you know Tate pulled up alongside me and uh got around me and uh it was fun super fun um kind of going back and forth with Tate not really back and forth but being right there next to him yeah. and competing <laughs> with him because that guy's uh you know you, you put him on your Mount Rushmore yeah, when we yeah. talked about that, yeah. a few, so that's a few. kind of mm-hmm. one of the things that was running through my mind was like, "Holy shit, this is Justin Tate, and I'm right there." Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's so, pretty damn cool. Yeah, so you're, you're, <laughs> you're out there on 97s. Yep. Yeah, 97s, <laughs> 97s, just ripping it up. Yeah, but yeah, luckily everything held together and crossed the finish line in the A main in third place, right behind Justin, and uh, yeah, it uh, overall third in the Pro 440. So. Heck yeah. We yeah, just, you guys were stoked on it. Yeah, we mm-hmm. were super happy with that. So, yeah, luckily everything just held together. We put so much work into the, these machines that it's, you know, that makes it worth it. So You were kind of hesitant to tell uh, Scott Schuster at the at the awards on how much you guys have into your 440. Yeah, Colin said 10 grand, but I, I know we got more than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Hey, you, didn't, you didn't have the clear tank on it this weekend? No. No. No, I didn't want to. Wreck it. Wreck it. Yeah. Yeah. Bra- and, and brand new NOS clear tank. Like, <clears throat> yeah. Didn't want to wreck it. So he threw a black one on there. And then on TikTok, I posted a video of it. And uh, that was one of the comments is, where's the clear tank? It's like, <laughs> boy, you don't even fucking know. <laughs> it's in a box. Yeah. Yeah, it's tucked away. Hmm. But no, it was a good weekend, Brody. I'm glad you had fun. It was fun <laughs> fighting with you for a little bit. There. Oh yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. We're, we'll get we'll get your take on it of of your of your story. Jesse finally got back to us, so we'll give <clears throat> the what you call him the, the strawberry blonde baby boy. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do. Hello, Jesse Hallstrom. It's me and Kyle and Brody in in studio again. You've been here. You know yep. where this is. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the first repeat guest, or? Oh, no, Vince has been on many times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Glenn, Glenn peeked in here earlier. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, my, my dad made a random call in while we were in between uh, Chad and Taylor. <laughs> nice. Who, who are you interviewing today? Uh, we talked to Chad about uh, running it, running the race and whatnot, and then we talked to Taylor about winning the pro stock, um, and then Vince for our five minutes with Fox, like usual. Oh, yep. And then uh, now we got the semi-pro winner on, Jesse Holstrom. Strawberry blonde baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> Just a young man. Uh, so, Jesse, you, you had a, a pretty damn good weekend with sweeping both semi-pro classes. And it's, like, to tell you the truth, it is identical to what I did in 2019. Okay. That's what I was trying to go for, trying to be like you, Gunner. Sure, Because <laughs> sure. you went... You went Semi pro improved, semi pro stock. You jumped up into pro from from the back row, made your way up to tenth. I finished tenth also, mm-hmm. really, and also set the fastest lap time from the back row as a semi pro. Why well, are we identical? Yep. So yeah, we we did we did the same thing, Jesse. Jesse, I was wow. I was screaming at you watching you in the <laughs> in the the pro stock, like coming in coming into the finish line. They had the the chicane corners, you know. Yeah. You were not breaking, like, <laughs> like right <laughs> up until the corner. I was like, slow down. <laughs> and, and every time you you railed it just perfect, I was like, that's why he's not slowing down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I was like, boy. 
Yeah, that's what when I asked when I talked to your mechanic uh, Brian uh, Saturday morning, he said, "How's it going, you guys? How's how's Jesse gonna do today?" And Brian said, "He'll be he'll do pretty good if he doesn't fuck it up." <laughs> 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 they had one thing. They said if I didn't sweep the weekend, I had to get a buzz cut. I never agreed to that, but I'm pretty sure I was getting a buzz cut if I didn't win. So <laughs> I had the pressure on. So yeah, so yeah, Jesse, looking at the looking at the results here. Um, yeah, you had, you had a hell of a weekend, like your sled was just fast and just handled good or, or was it a combination of a few different things or what, what do you think? Uh, yeah, the thing, it was an absolute rock trip. I don't think I've ever had a sled that's been that fast. Earlier in the week, it was just a dog when I was, we, me and Wes were out testing and I, like he would go down a straightaway three quarters throttle when it <laughs> comes out, my sled had about no compression. So we had to do a quick motor swap because that was, it was. Yeah, it was wow, super weak. So we rebuilt or did that. Then went out and rolled it, got about 50 miles on, and then just put her away. And I got sick two days before the race. So we just kind of waited and then didn't ride. I rolled a little bit on Friday and said, oh, it's good. So then we went and just, just raced it. And mm. that, yeah, it worked pretty good. Huh, heck yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, what do you, uh, you think of the track? I thought it was probably the best ice track I've ever ridden. It was, the ice was like good. The track flowed nice, um, nice and wide. Just a little cold. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. Just a wee. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been probably about the perfect, perfect weekend if it would have been about 30 degrees. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It would have been great. <clears throat> but you didn't have, but. I suppose you, you got out front both, both days. So you didn't really have any snow dust to, to fight with. And until that pro open or pro stock final you jumped into. Yeah, it was clean and gosh, I could not. The first two laps of that pro stock final, I couldn't see the sled in front of me. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Behind twenty from the sled, and then I almost ran out of fuel. Uh-huh. I, I I lost count of the laps. I'm not usually doing laps, and then I forgot what lap I was supposed to. I remember I was supposed to pit on lap four or five, five or six, and I for, like I went by. And I'm like, what lap was it? And I just went by the pit, and I was like, I think it was lap six because I just looked at my fuel. I'm like. I have two bars that's a fuel. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make it around here. <laughs> and then coming out of the cattails, I see my fuel light come on. I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. And I know when the qualifier came on and the last, the chicane section, it bogged on me once. I was like, well, shit, I don't think I'm going to make it in. And I was like, I did all this work just for me to mess it all up, dude. I'm like, you going to be pissed at me. <laughs> and I came in the chicane and I came after that tight or that left hander after a big straightaway coming out of the cattails that next sweeping right my sled went more and i was like <laughs> you have got to be kidding me so i shook the handlebars like and shook the sled around on the ice to get like some fuel slosh <laughs> on the tank and it picked back up and i just stepped it into the fuel stop and i was like oh my goodness so then we took five gallons at the fuel stop and made it in for another three laps but i got a little worried there. we were we were watching you the whole time and what was it like passing all those guys like there was some huge names that you were you were fighting with and and like what was it like passing them and then yeah uh, like where were you making these passes well i i, I gotta admit the sled was a little it was a little rocket ship so i made 90 percent of the passes coming out of a corner or, or uh most of them on a straightaway so i didn't feel like i felt cooler than it actually was i think <laughs> Made me feel better than I actually am, but yeah, and you, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you finished tenth, and like the guys that finished behind you here, it's it's Hatine and Faust and Ergman and Brown and Herf and Ree and Charlie and I mean that's that's top top pros yeah, that you were those are top you were pros passing. Yeah, we were watching it going around. I was like, holy shit, he's got by. All yeah, that's these guys. that's what Nate Nate had told me after the race. He's like, you wouldn't believe Jesse out there, like. Him and Peppel were setting fast laps, mm-hmm. fighting, fighting fast laps, lap after lap. I was like, really? And then, yeah, looking at the the, he, the scoring sheets, it's like, damn, he beat you by three seconds on a fast lap. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> well, well, like I com- uh, I looked at our fast laps on Saturday, Jesse, for my little short run on yep. Pro Open, and, and I had I had three seconds on you on Saturday. So like, it's yeah, it's uh. The laps, I know, some, the laps just got faster and faster yeah, through the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. 
but something like, about me riding that profile, I just felt I don't do it all. He said the center profile. And he goes, all right, don't fuck this thing up. Don't <laughs> roach the brakes. Don't fuck the track up. Just baby it. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then the profile like what I goes, all right, let this motherfucker eat. So I just <laughs> put the hammer down. He's, he said you burnt up a set of pads. Nice. Yeah, the pads are pretty much gone after that one. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, that's. I think maybe it's something to do with because when I jumped up from semi pro to pro that year, it was crazy cold that day too, mm. and snow dust was bad. And you, you just kind of go into it like with no expectations at all, like just like I'm gonna go have fun. And then you start passing people, and it's just like pushing it harder and harder. Yeah. It's like fuck, this is fun. <clears throat> Yeah, it's probably the most I've ever had a snow goal. Not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> like, there's something about like just starting in the back and like knowing you can't get, do any shittier than you are right now. I just like with and it doesn't mean anything because you're just your weekend. You already get all your goals for the weekend. Now it's just go have fun and just go ride your snowmobile. Yeah, yeah, that's a, exactly what I what I did too. I I seen Jesse on the track at at one point, like across like a couple straightaways that yep. way or something, and I was like. I, you have no reception of how, what place he's in or something, but I just remember seeing him. I was like, oh, there goes Jesse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember seeing yeah. you too. It was, uh, it was kind of the chicane section, right? As I took that left after coming out of Catfield, and you, know, you were coming towards the all the vehicles there. I seen you and I think Taylor one lap or two laps. So I was like, hey, there's Gunner. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but no, yeah, damn, damn good job, Jesse, for this weekend. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think we might need to get you on the Brian program. All these second places seem to get mold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe me and Brady will have to step our game up this summer with doing some conditioning after work or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got that. Uh, you, you, don't, you never get tired, do you? Uh, no, not really. Like, I had one, I had one, uh, person asked me that last year after pine lake they said it looked like you got tired out there at the end and that, that fucking made me mad yeah like because yeah. I, I wasn't tired yeah. and i was like i thought to myself man did i look tired <clears throat> and then so it was making sure that that wasn't going to be a, a, a excuse or an option to say mm-hmm. <laughs> i think it's more i just get mentally tired like all like trying to get all the breaking points right my brain just like i don't know i just you try and do that for that long, like every lap consistently, kind of gets taxing on your mind, especially when it's that cold. I think it just wears on wears in your mind, your body. Yeah, like me and Taylor talked about that in the in the bar after the race, like with Brady, on how how many uh, decisions your mind is making at that mm. speed, and like for every corner, you're thinking for like, okay, I'm gonna break here, and mm-hmm. it's like, okay, hang off now, and okay, tap the brake here and give it gas, and and get back on and okay, like, could you imagine how much you think? Yeah, and yeah, you throw another sleds and snow dust, and you have to think on your feet. Like, you can't see. I think starting that or doing that semi pro final right before that pro final really helped me in that snow dust today. I knew all my breaking points on the track before I even got out there. Like, yeah, for sure. I knew what the track was like, and like, there's a few times where I was buying snow dust. I'm like, oh shit, that's the berm right there. You bounce off the edge of the berm and get back on the track. You're like, <laughs> Okay, let's not do that again. It's just, I don't know, just your mind and everything just gets tired after a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, you had a good weekend with uh, Semi-Pro Improved. It was you and Hauser and Walter. And then uh, for the stock, Walter Walter had double podiums for a third and second. And then uh, Luke Van Lysel with the third on the – Sunday. Yeah, for, for Sunday. Yep. So, so heck, yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good Semi-Pros. Yeah. Good weekend too. Huh. But, Heck yeah! Well, you gonna make any more calls tonight, or is this it? No, this is it. Uh, we're gonna get get the lowdown on how Brody's weekend went for him, real quick, and then probably call it a night. Mm-hmm. We're so, three hours mm-hmm. in right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! No, we're not. Are we? We're, we're, two four, we're four and a half hours in now. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here half the day. Two two no. minutes or two hours and thirteen minutes. Oh okay. So yeah. You guys didn't have one last week, did you? No, no. no Kyle was sick, and then we could have pushed one towards the end of the week, but we didn't want to get sick neither. Yeah. So, yeah. And it was close to the race, and it's like, eh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we can't do it without Kyle. Well, yeah. we could. Mm-hmm. It just wouldn't be the same. Yeah. No. 
Hey, Jesse, I heard about your guys' Supercross fantasy deal. Like, um, so you are, like, between you and Josh, um, what what what's the what's the wager like? Who loses Supercross? You either have to get a buzz cut or dye your hair. <laughs> yeah, either it's me, Josh, Parker Ball, Eric Gerbrot, and Ben Gerbrot. And if you lose, you have to either dye your hair or buzz your hair or dye it either blonde. If you're blonde, you have to dye it brunette. Or if you're brunette, you have to dye it blonde. Right? Okay, so. I was because Josh said he's got to bleach his hair, or I was like, that's not gonna work on Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of made a mistake. And forgot to pick, place my picks for San Francisco, so <laughs> I don't think I'm doing too hot right now. You dug yourself a hole. Yeah. 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 Parker even reminded me, and I had no service on the lake, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Should have ran up to the lodge and got on that Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah, but... I have, uh, I placed I my know. picks and they didn't do me any damn good. They were off. I, I, if I, I was going to pick, I was going to pick Barsha, but I see me how the results i don't think he did very good no, no he didn't no i uh i just didn't even look at the qualifier or nothing i just picked <clears throat> oh really yeah are you in our are you are you in our shop talk rm fantasy yeah i think jersey? i am mm-hmm. yeah i am <clears throat> um I, I mean i haven't looked at it i think he's jay halsey yeah that's me you oh, would uh, never guess who i am <laughs> I'm, what I'm are Winnie, you? I'm Winnie Goops. That's you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Colin, Colin is lasagna drip. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, in our Shop Talk podcast, uh, RM Fantasy League, it's Colin Leiden and then Wadena, 52. That's probably Re. Re. Yep. yep. And then Schmidt. That's Riley Schmidt in third. And Snappy Mike, Gerbski. Yeah. So, yeah, you're not, you're not even uh, in the top 10. Where's Winnie Goop's yeah. at 10th? Your 10th? Your, your yeah. 10th, Kyle. There we go. Yeah, I, I, I have a hard time staying consistent on, like, taking people. Yeah. And I forgot my password to log in, so I hope to, I don't know if I can stay in my account anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ, kid. Yeah. Um, too, many cra- too many concussions and crashes do that to you. <laughs> You're just a little young buck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, okay, Jesse. Well... In two weeks. Yeah, down in Park Rapids. Yep. Are you gonna watch watch us again on Eagle River this weekend? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you watch you you and your dad watched it with Steve Dolan last year, didn't you? Yeah, we went me and we went to Steve and he cooked us a burger and we watched him <laughs> play some. <laughs> nice. Uh, heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, good job this weekend, Jesse. Uh all right. Now you're just gonna be sandbagging the semi pro class the whole rest of the year. Yeah. I don't know it almost makes you feel like I should have did pro, but <laughs> I when I did well that year in summer pro at Pine Lake, and then uh, went to Nate Wash the, the for the last race of the year. Wes called me a sandbagger. Oh yeah, it's like I've won one semi pro race. <laughs> yeah, and you're calling me a sandbagger yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it on to you now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Jesse. We'll see you down in Park Rapids. All right. See you down there. Yep. See you later. Right. Bye. <laughs> so we're finally to it. Brody, what did you think? No. Did, you, did you have fun? Yeah, I had a I had a hell of a time. It was awesome. Was we're, it? Third place. Yeah, third classics. place up there. Yeah. First like, race ever. And that's... No, that, not ever. So... so those those are his up there too. Those are mine, yeah. man. Yeah, but, but this is the first ever like how many years adult race? You know, what was it? Fourteen years? No. Um, yeah. Oh seven. Yeah. So yeah, fourteen. Yeah. yeah. Thirteen. Fourteen. Yeah. And your freaking podium classic. Podium classic made money too. Made money yeah. on my first race. Yeah. That's as an adult. Yeah, it was awesome. It was. Sweet. It couldn't have been. I'm so glad I didn't race last year. And like this was my first race because it was like. Last year would have been a bad taste in my mouth because Ben Yort said that. It was a hell of a race to start racing with um, on how the track was. The temp, te- Last year's temperatures was nice. But just yeah. on how choppy it was. It, and, it was. There was a few heaves and stuff like that. But it's, it. well, that was Ben's first race. So that's kind of where I think he got it from. So but. Yeah. And so this race was like, holy shit, if every race is like this, I'm going to have a hell of a time racing. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, you, I think you definitely got it in you <coughs> that you can uh, be great. <laughs> be great. I wouldn't say that. It's it's nice to hop on a sled with how many years of experience building it, 
and I can just hop on it and race it. I mean, yeah, the, the Gen 2, we have a really good setup. Yeah, in it. exactly. So <clears throat> that's where a lot of, well, a lot of people get a sour taste in their mouth about ice racing is that they don't have the right setup. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, a lot of ditch guys, you know, like you look at the people that are doing both, they're unreal talented. Mm-hmm. Like Justin Tate, um, you know, Bunkies, they're doing it everything all the ditch and the ice stuff which is you know we're primarily you know focused on ice stuff so that's kind of where we you know don't get deterred from it Mm -hmm. but yeah if you have a a bad weekend in the ditch it's like you don't get deterred from it then yeah 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 but no it was awesome just to yeah to race to go full throttle like you're supposed to be going fast like you're supposed to hit every corner fast hold it full throttle and just be locked in and being locked in is so freaking cool. I don't, not thinking about anything, not even seeing the crowd and all the trucks, not even thinking about that. (laughs) I was nervous at the start, but as soon as that flag went up in the air and I got the whole shot both days, yeah, like no nerves at all. It was just pure locked in, just racing the sled. And it was so fun. It was awesome. What do you think when Brody pulled the whole shot on you? (laughs) Oh, I, I, I was spinning off the line, oh. so it was like, I, it was just something I was dealing with, you know, but... Zero I, spin off the line. Yeah, I was like a rocket. <laughs> I was I was just watching, you know, watching everybody is fun when they're out in front of you, and then, yeah, I was watching Brody, I was like, you got it, like, that's uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it's a little tight for my, you know, yeah. like... Um, I, yeah, it was a little tight, but yeah. I... I didn't want to change anything. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. more like, the more and more comfortable he gets on the sled, the yeah. more and more comfortable he'll be with it being a little looser. Yeah, yeah. and that's what I'm scared of because if you, you get, like, you get really dialed in on it, you're going to be wicked fast. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah, I, I wanted, I was thinking about loosening it up, but it's like, no, screw it. I'm not going to change anything. I know how to ride it what for I could, the next day. You know, what, what I could say would help is, it, you know, if the track did stay like that year round, just go out and fucking ride that track because there, you can't build a test track that's going to be mimic uh, that track. No. 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 And that, that was the coolest part because the test tracks that we were riding on, they're tighter. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not opening up the sleds and that's, that's that track was just wide open almost the whole time, and that was the coolest part. So I think if we, you know, did get a good test course that was a little wider, we can, uh, you know, we can try start loosening loosening up well, a little bit. Yeah, just can, even mm-hmm. even on normal test tracks. Yeah, I want to loosen it up a little more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, just being locked in like that that was so cool. Like going down the straightaways. Did you wave at me? Ben I, did. I, I, I tried to reach out and touch you, but we were going okay, so yeah, fast. Okay, I, I saw your was, arm. So yeah. my arm. Okay. <laughs> Boy, I was so locked in, I couldn't even, I wasn't even yeah. going to wave. I just looked at you and gave you a little head nod like I did to Ben. But yeah, it was. We, so me and Brody got, so I drafted him pretty good, and then I was able to just creep on him on the straight, and we got right next to each Our other. Our skis and I, we were, were basically touching. We were, we were tapped, <laughs> like. And there was nothing more we could do. We were tapped. Well, Cause then once once you do draft up alongside somebody, then you almost you side draft yeah. each other yeah. and then you're you're stuck. You're, yeah, at that you're going speed the same speed. Too, that. Yeah. So that's where we were at. We were tapped <laughs> and it was that long sweeping coming in the long sweeping corner. And I just slowly started creeping over to get in the groove a little <laughs> bit. Bro he's right there. And, and then he finally the ski touched a little snow and it finally got around. Him. And yeah, I was like, Okay, he's gonna he's gonna hit it hard. I'm going to back off and see how <laughs> far you blow it and see if I can hold the inside and in which, yeah, I, I stuck behind you. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I was, I was, I was so happy for you. You just put a hook in it, you know, and then just watch, you know, yep, watch and everything. And I was, I was being really careful to not make any mistakes. So I didn't want to wad him up. You know, if I would have made a mistake by breaking late and sliding into a corner, I was scared that Brody was watching my brake light. Sure. No, I don't watch brake light. (laughs) (laughs) So I was being pretty timid. And I thought, you know, if it come down to it um, and Brody does start creeping up on the inside of me, I'm just going to start kicking it out wider. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, he can't. Take the inside off. But yeah, eating your ice chips and everything and bobbing in and out of and just getting pelted. I'm like, I'm in the thick of it. This is the coolest <laughs> shit I've ever done on a snowmobile. I know like if my my arms up here from Saturday, I just wore my thin jacket. It looks like I got hit like with a paintball gun in a few spots yeah. from the ice chips. But then on Sunday, 
Sunday was so cold. I was like, I'm not gonna get cold, so I wore my big. I wore my insulated yeah. coat on Sunday. Mm, yeah, no number, <laughs> no, no number at <laughs> all. All black on the back. And Shit, I, yeah, like John Wick. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I was, I didn't get hot at all. Like, but like, I did get a little warm, like lap five or something, where I, I pulled one zipper like mm. halfway down, and that was about it. But, but no, and yeah, I was eating too much ice chips because it tore the tape off the top of the the goggles. <laughs> And my, my right eye started, like, fogging up and getting filled with some snow and, and shit. And so, yeah, that wasn't fun. And then my, my two fingers kind of got cold, but I was, it, you know, I think that's where the frostbite started. Mm. Anyway. Mm. But, and the whole lap, I was right on your ass. The whole first lap, it was so, f- yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Then you had a little altercation. Uh, yeah, then we caught up to, <coughs> to Ben York, which, going down the, the straightaway, going back to the lodge, the first long one, where... Speedo completely pinned, and then you and Ben are in front of me, and it's just a big wall of white snow dust, and I'm still just holding it pinned. <laughs> I'm like, God, this feels so dumb. <laughs> like, this is what people don't, you know, they tell you not to do. Like, when you can't see, slow down. It's like, I know it's a mile long, so I'm just going to hold her pinned, mm-hmm. just yeah. tucked in, wah, just screaming away. And I can kind of see the markers, and I saw the one double down arrow. I'm like, oh shit, okay, yeah. here, here it's coming now. Yeah. And I see you and Ben's helmets. I'm like, shit, shit. <laughs> Made the corner just fine. Made it a little too good because I was right on Ben's ass in the next corner. He kind of swapped out, and I didn't want to hit him or turn the opposite way of the turn and hit the, the berm. And so I kind of punched the brakes and got two sideways and just had a tip over. And yeah, I landed straight on my back. And I didn't feel anything. I just heard my helmet bounce off the Black. ice. Yeah. Huh. I didn't know I didn't know it was like that. I thought you like slowly just tipped it. Yeah, so I didn't. No, like, it was uh it was a shit whipping. Oh yeah. really? Huh. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. It hooked up and it, it yeah, matter of a split second, blink yeah. of an eye. And Glad that didn't scare you, you know, or you know, because that that's a scary feeling when it fucking does that. So <laughs> Yeah. I no, had, yeah, it shit had, whipped me. I had it happened twice. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, my eyes were wide open. Yeah, I I felt, you know, landing. My yeah, eyes wide open. It just that loud clunk of the helmet bouncing off the ice, and it was just fuck, 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 yeah. trying to get the sled over and my <laughs> tether in and start it up one pull and I'm and off was, again. Was Ben right there too, or did he just slid out a little bit he and just, he kept going? He just completely, you know, swapped out, and it scared me because I thought he was going to hit the – berm and or i was gonna hit him oh. and so it was a split second decision of just hitting the brakes and hoping Did you get to see ben flip over i was catching his snow dust and so i i started pushing harder <laughs> and i was looking out of one eye pushing harder after i saw some snow dust i'm like god son of a bitch maybe i could catch ben yeah. you know at the end and then I did catch him because he wadded it up and <laughs> rolled his sled into a, a, a berm <laughs> and so i went by him like God, Did you damn laugh? It. Were you laughing at him when you were by? Like, I was, ah. I was kind of laughing, but was, at the same time, like son of a bitch. Like, was he like he was getting up though? And oh everything? yeah, he was up and trying to get his tether in, oh. and his tether was. He wasn't like just laid out there. No, <laughs> no, hell no, no. He was up. He was trying to get his. He was messing with his tether. It wouldn't go in. It was froze up. Oh, that's what uh, people were saying. Um, so Sunday, the first race of the day was a 440C. Yep, and then Jeremy File was leading. Leading the race. Oh, my God. And he was in front of Colin, I guess. And uh, right at the finish line, they heaved it up for the transponder cable. I don't know why they did it. That was weird. It's like they dumped skid steer buckets of snow and just left it. Yeah. Well, Jeremy File was the first person to go over that, you know. So, I guess he had it pegged, and it just, poof, straight up. Straight up and down. Skis were straight up and down in the air, and he went. And he star- starfished on the ice. I, know, I, wa- I was watching. We, we were, were we were watching. thirty feet away. Oh. We watched the whole thing of him hitting it and just straight up and down, fully pinned, what? <laughs> flying across the sky, and then just coming down on the ass end, and then getting shit whipped. I know. I felt oh. so bad. Oh my god, it was insane. It was for him to be the first person to go over that. You know. Yeah. That yeah, sled was, was fast. He was. Yeah. He was out in the lead. Yeah. It was awful, but it was wild to watch him. That guy, that guy like, can still ride like, like crazy. Mm-hmm. We started together in the classic, and he got the launch on me, and Colin got the, Colin was ahead, so I kind of was following Jeremy, and I was watching Colin where he was breaking on the very first lap, and uh, <laughs> you're like, holy shit! <laughs> no, I was like, okay, so I'll just fucking you know. 
kind of take the same line as Colin. Well, Jeremy was right in front of me, and I was kind of pushing him a little bit. So I started slowing down, and Jeremy didn't. <laughs> like he <laughs> just kept going, and he braked right at the last second, and he went up on the bank, and he cut back down, and he fucking – we touched skis, and we – Drag race to the next corner, and I <laughs> was able to make a pull on him or whatever. But yeah, that guy still got it. He's not scared to just hold it wide into the corner. Like, yeah, and yeah, and he, that's that's how I passed him because he during your race with him, something must have happened with his goggles or something. He yeah, pulled off and yeah, then pulled did. out in front mm-hmm. of me and the me and whoever I was I caught up to. And yeah, he was that 440 was fast, yeah, almost it, faster than my 600. It was wild, but yeah, the only reason I got around him is yeah, he was going deep into corners, and, and the one time he was almost out in the cattails, and that's where I got around him. <laughs> but yeah, he was hauling ass though. I yeah. thought he was gonna pass me at the end. So you you guys out there just racing, Jeremy? Yeah, Pyle. yeah. One of the I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that at all. I just knew it was a 440. I'm like, God, this 440's hauling ass. Yeah, like, yeah, God yeah. damn, I can't pass that's him. That's the 1992 <clears throat> I500 winner. Yeah, and Pine Lake and winner. Pine Lake yeah. winner yeah. yeah. Yep. No, I didn't know that until the end. I'm like, holy shit, that's Jeremy File. <laughs> like, holy shit, and I passed him. What the <laughs> fuck? That shouldn't. Ha- that shouldn't have happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was good to see him out there. Huh? Heck yeah. yeah! Good weekend. We finally we finally got to go racing, yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. Finally, yeah. I'm glad it's over with. It's just such a weight off of our backs. I yeah, think. for sure. So get that one out of the way, and let's just coast through the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, I'm just excited to watch you now go through well, Eagle you're, River, and you're gonna go to you're racing Faustin. Oh if, yeah. If uh-huh. we're ra- if yeah. Faustin if Faustin's racing, we're spring racing. race happens. Yeah. Sure, you're racing yep. Faustin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. that's where. Well, yeah, you said the uh, top speed really won't be a, a <laughs> no. Yeah, so I'll be able to race you with yep. your seven hundreds a little more. <laughs> no, it, it's actually you know I'd I'd rather have the six hundred and mm-hmm. yeah, it's yeah, there's no difference. Yeah, okay. not not any. Well, yeah, true because yeah, you did catch me, but yeah, you were in my draft when yep. we were next to each other. Yeah, there is n- no not a single bit of difference. No, I wish I got to race against Colin just to see how fast his was. His is. Was, he was fast. Yeah, this is really. Fast. I wish I got to see it. God damn it! Colin made fast people look not fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Well, yeah, just for reference or whatever. We were, you know, we started together, and then once we got on the straights, <clears throat> even out of the corner, his would muscle on mine, and we got on the straights, and it was like I was standing still. Oh, really? I was looking bitch. at the speedometer, and I was, you know, pegged. Mm-hmm. You know, like I couldn't go no faster. The RPMs were right. You know. <clears throat> and he was just pulling gone. away. Yeah, I'll be damned. Uh, yeah, he built a fast machine. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of working, trying to work it with the rules or whatever, where we can run the Gen two in the higher classes. So, so I think we're gonna try doing the pro open stuff next year with it. Oh, God sure. damn. Yeah. That'd be cool to see. <laughs> yeah, just because, you know, the speed he's pulling is good. I mean, if we dial in the handling on it, <clears throat> you know, to what we want it to be, I think it'd be competitive. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. it'd, it'd be pretty close to some of these lap times. I know, I think. yeah, I haven't, uh, we haven't been able to see any lap times from, yeah. like, your guys' classes yet. No, it's just moto scoring is all it is. So. But you'd think... Did they have transponders going mm-hmm. at all? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. So I think I'm kind of waiting for my lap stuff to pop up about them. Yeah, but I'd like to see it. Even in, like, the, the 440 class, I'd like to see yeah. the yeah. lap times because after this first lap or whatever, I could see that I was gaining on Tate. I would wanna, really want to compare the lap times there. Oh, but. sure. <clears throat> huh. Well, yeah, I had fun. Yeah, Pine Lake race coming on again. Got to wait a whole nother year to try, mm-hmm. try to win it again. Yeah, and we're already fucking working on building new shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking about race snowmobiles at all anymore. <laughs> I, I'm leaving the 700 into in the trailer until Park Rapids. Um, <laughs> what I'll probably do is just register for Park Rapids Classic Class, go down there at 9 o'clock, unload it for a Classic Class, load it back up, go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking um, about running marathons. Yeah, right now. Yep. There you, you go. Went from Pine Lake to marathons now. Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm thinking about doing. Heck yeah. 
Good show, you guys. That yeah, was, that was a good one. Damn good show. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, hopefully we'll have Eagle River stuff to talk about next weekend. Oh, yeah. See if we can't give some high up Eagle River winners a call or something. Are you flying? No. You're driving? Yeah. yeah. It's only like six and a half hours to Eagle yeah. River. Yeah. Oh. So, oh. that ain't too bad. No. And then, uh, yeah, and then Park Rapids and then the Sioux. You going to have two sleds at Eagle yeah. River for Cataract team? Yeah, that's the plan. The, the plan is right now, yeah. Who's riding with you? It just me, my, me, myself, and I on the, on the number one mm-hmm. for the yeah for the sprint or the enduro. Yep, and then uh yep Ryan and Troy on the twenty one. Nice. Yeah, that'd be fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Heck yeah. Well, good finally. luck to everybody at Eagle River this weekend. Um, stay safe. Mm, drive fast. Take chances. Yeah, it's the only way to win. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. We still have merch available. Hats, shirts. Me yeah. Me or Kyle. Thanks for showing up to Pine Lake if you buried the cold. Yep. <coughs> yeah. And I, uh, if you didn't show up, for, so I know some, like, the East Coast guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so that Luke Vat Eye, that was a really cool story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I read that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So good job um, this weekend um, showing up, you know. They've only ever raced the and, East Coast guys. Yeah, and they did really good. Fifth, I think. In semi-pro stock? It improved and stock. Um, oh, there's a stock class paper right there. Se- seventh in stock. Okay. And then that's eighth and sort of, improved. You know, raising some big names, that's... Uh, oh, that's, for sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite the accomplishment and quite the dedication to make the make the trip from East Coast to here. Mm-hmm. So, That was the guy that offered to bring our sleds out to New York. Oh, okay. On, on one of our Facebook posts. Mm-hmm. Yep. One of these days, we'll make it out there. Yeah. I said, yeah, I, I had commented back. as like, maybe for me right now, this year, it's a pipe dream, but maybe yeah. next year. Yeah. We should line it up where we go out there, do some racing. Mm-hmm. Oh, and one other thing. <laughs> I was recognized in the in the, in the the staging in the pits oh. multiple times. The one time was Jesse, I know. The other time, I don't know. I might, it might, might have been a Longton guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, or, Yeah. Adam or Travis? Yeah, but uh, I heard bro like Brody. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm looking. At, everyone's got helmets on and face masks, and I'm walking around. Yeah, and I just wave at him like, hey! Yeah. And it's like, God, I think I think pretty sure that was Jesse. And then the last time it was like, I don't know who the hell that was. I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. But yeah, that was cool. So yeah, someone recognized me at That's Pine sweet. Lake. That's sweet. Okay. Even with my big, you know, Grizzly Adams beard. Yep. Uh, well, okay. Thanks again, everybody. We'll yeah. be back. We'll be back next week. Indeed. Yeah. Have awesome. a good one. We'll be <laughs> you and your fucking planned <laughs> thumbnails. I'm not doing it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yep. See ya. <laughs>